like our little countdown. I'm gonna find myself bopping along to it. But hello team, how are we going? I have had such a crazy busy week and my planners are feeling like super neglected. So today we're just gonna do some work in these, get myself caught up so that I can kind of start the new week feeling a little bit more cool, calm and collected rather than like a scattered brained mess. Let me know what are you working on while we work today? I have a bunch that I need to do. In particular, first of all, I need to start up my daily log for today. You can see I've got some sections on this page already, but this is yesterday, so for me that's Sunday. Uh, so today is Monday. I'm gonna start Monday here. This was my weekly brain dump of stuff that needs to get done at some stage. We've got some video planning notes and a cleaning list. So we'll start the daily log here, doing one of our headers. Let's see, grab my comments open so I can actually see all y'all saying hello. Oh, hi, oh, hi, oh, hi. Yeah, the countdown is a win. I'm glad that you like the countdown because, yeah, I, um, I want to make sure that people can get in and, and feel like they're not missing out on the action and whatnot. So it's good that it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't interfere with the start of a stream. Let's see, where is my grey? Nope, that one's too dark. There we go. Alrighty. So, grey tombow in 5-5. Five, five. You're, you're starting your yearly collections journal. That's excellent. I'm going to be starting mine at the end of October probably, so I'm still a little way off. But, I, I it pays to be early, right? Like, there are good, good reasons to be early with things. So I am going to use some washi tape just to mask my page. I've been using this little tape dispenser, which is actually quite cute. Like you just like pull it off and then ta-da! It actually, the, the ripping mechanism works better than I thought it would. <laughs> I was a little bit skeptical about it, but it actually works fairly decently. So we'll put that on there. And put another one underneath it. Uh, the only thing that I don't know, is it maybe a slight issue about it? Is that my uh, estimating of length of tape usually isn't so good. So sometimes I either overestimate it and pull off like way too much, or I underestimate and then have like not quite enough to do my masking. But this time we've, we've done an okay job. I'm glad you like the layout. Yeah, I've been enjoying having these little boxes for each day of the week and then a little priority space. So I need to put that there. One two, three, four, five and a half, just so that everything feels consistent. And then we can flip that back around and just pull the tape up and then we have a nice clean line. I did try not doing the tape uh, at the end of last week. I'll flip over the page, I'll show you what I mean. So for these, these ones here, I was like, oh, surely I don't need to do the tape. Surely I can draw a straight enough line. And I kind of look at them and I'm like, you're pretty straight. But I like these ones so much better. <laughs> so I've been just, just kind of like resuming myself to the fact that yes, I, I do like to have those clean boxes. So I do enjoy doing the masking trick. It just makes it look a little bit cleaner, which is kind of odd because all of these ones here are hand drawn. Uh, so they're a little bit, you know, wobbly, a little shaky, but they're also supposed to look like little pieces of paper that have been crumpled up and stuck in and whatnot. Good question. Do you save the washi tape? I personally don't, only because with the type of tape this is in particular, this is a very kind of like, not like, not like super waterproof, but waterproof enough that the ink from the Tombow kind of beads up on the surface of it. So if I were to try and use it again on another piece, I'd end up blending the colors or I'd smudge the ink and then I'd end up you know, stuff everywhere. Sadness. Um, if it is blurry for you, you can try and refresh the stream. Uh, otherwise, it just might be being a plonker. <laughs> like, apologies. It's it's the feeling that counts, right? I don't know. So this is my Monday daily log. So Monday the 18th of September. And we have plenty of things that need to get done. September... So I'm gonna rotate my journal here because I find that writing on an angle is actually a lot more comfortable for me. I'm not sure if you guys understand that feeling or if you can relate to that one, but I find that it being tilted is just a little bit more comfy. So I need to do my laundry, which has already been started. I've already washed it. 
And I was standing downstairs before the stream, like, come on, come on, you've only got two minutes to go. And then I'm thinking, like, yeah, but the stream starts in two minutes. So then if I spend another three minutes fluffing around trying to get it out of the machine and into the dryer and whatever else, yeah. So that's a future me problem, but I need to put it into the dryer. And then I'm going to write down, put it away. But to be honest, it's probably not going to get put away until, like, Monday next week. <laughs> Literally to do my laundry this morning. I took my clean, well, it's, it's it's kind of like my laundry basket that I kind of put the dirty clothes in, transfer them to the to laundry, wash them, dry them, put them back into the same basket and bring them upstairs because I'm like, you, know, just, you don't have that much transfer that it's actually like a big issue. Anywho. So this morning I was like, okay, I've still got clean clothes in the bucket and all of my like, you know, dirty clothes that need to be washed are all just sitting in a pile on the floor <laughs> in a corner. So I need to empty the bucket so that I can put all the dirty clothes into the bucket so that I can take it downstairs. So now all of my clean clothes from last week that haven't been worn or put away yet are just sitting on my bed. So we're going to say put away old for the ones that are from last week and then just put away for the ones that are coming out this week. Wah, wah. <laughs> Similar idea, I get to do the laundry of the towels. And this is the one that I would have been putting on uh, after my load of laundry, except just didn't, the stars didn't align, the timing didn't work out, alas. <laughs> so we've got wash, dry, Put away old as well because we had a couple of spare towels that were in there that never actually ended up making their way home. <laughs> put away old and put away. Alrighty. So that's kind of home admin-y bits. And we've got some other home admin -y stuff that we need to do too, like the groceries. And we're going to do all of these as nested lists. So by that, groceries, we're going to pretend I spelled that right. So you have a main kind of project or task or whatnot, and that sits at the top level. And then the ones underneath it get slightly indented because they're like the smallest steps underneath that. Yeah. Alrighty, question. Did you end up buying anything from the a &O Halloween sale? I did not. I held myself back only because I try to only place one Archer and Olive order per quarter. Um... Just because, like, with shipping to New Zealand and all of that, and the fact that I already have a, a plethora of notebooks, and typically what I buy are the notebooks, I try and hold myself, hold myself to just one purchase per quarter, which means that my next purchase is probably going to be Black Friday. Yeah. There we go. One order per quarter. It's going to be Black Friday, because that's usually when the best sales are, and I like to get more bang for my buck. <laughs> For everybody's here who's like on their first live, it's very exciting. Thank you for being here. If you're here on your seventh live, thank you for being here. It's nice to have our team from all around the world chilling with us. So groceries, we need to uh, write the list because I have no idea what we need to get. Possibly place the order depending on what it is we're getting. And we need to pick it up. And then we also need to I need to I need to populate my finance tracker because it has been like oh I don't even know I too long it's the kind of thing that like you know when you have a task and it's not usually the fun kind of thing it's not like the most enjoyable task in the world so you kind of think to yourself like oh yeah I can I can put that off for a little bit it'll be fine and then you put it off and then of course by putting it off it feels more daunting so then when you come to do it the next time or think that you should do it the next time you're like mm, that sounds like that sounds like work I don't want to do that work is Work isn't fun. Work isn't the business. Well, it is, but anywho. So you put it off again. And then it kind of just snowballs into this, like, gigantuan kind of thing because you've put it off for so long. You're like, great. <laughs> Current me is not really happy at past me. Anyway, so populate. Finance tracker. And as part of that, we need to log money in and out which is kind of all done in one stage that's fine 
And we also need to calculate owings. Because what oftentimes when I'm hanging out with my friends and stuff happens is that one of us will pay for the whole thing and then we'll just split the cost or like, you know, send through some kind of like, hey, you owe me X amount and it's been a while. It's been a while. So I haven't done that. Uh, so I have a couple of owings that I need to communicate with people. Calculate owings. There we go. So. For the rest of this list, because it is just sitting in this corner here, it is going to come and sit underneath the video planning section, because these videos are all for the Bullet Journal Basic series. I'm not... Oh, I feel like I need to put a header in just to distinguish that it's a different section, even though it's Monday Continued. So I'm going to put a header in here, and it's going to be... Red? It can't be blue. I just did grey. We'll do red. That seems... That seems reasonable. Let's just grab out our little tape dispenser again. Alrighty, so we're talking about neatness of handwriting, yeah? I find that it is the cheerleader effect. The handwriting only looks as good as it does because all of the characters are a uniform kind of height um, and roughly a uniform width. Uh, if you actually go and have a look at individual characters, not so much. <laughs> not so much so neat. Uh, that's part of the reason why I write in all caps in my journal is because if I were to write in my more typical handwriting, uh, that has a tendency to change more readily. Like it's harder to get consistency in the characters, if that kind of makes sense. I, um, I find that like they will slant at different angles or the kind of width of the characters will change or something like that. And it doesn't look quite as nice. And I know that if my journal doesn't look fairly nice, I am much less inclined to actually use it. Which, you know, if you're not using your journal, it doesn't work very well. So, <laughs> so I do try to make it look, you know, halfway decent. There we go. Clunk. I'm just holding you in place because I didn't want to move you over too far. Sorry, child. Beautiful. So, that one's in there, looking neat. So like we said before, because this is a waterproof tape, that red coloration has beaded up on the surface of the tape, which means that if I were to try and place it down somewhere else and kind of smooth it out or whatnot, it uh, often would just end up smudging onto the page, which isn't quite what I want to do. So I don't tend to save it. I know you can, like you can, like you know, get a wet wipe, wipe it off, all of that kind of stuff. I do not have wet wipes, so I will not be doing that. So we're gonna just write Monday eighteenth again. September, and this isn't typical uh, for me to have this many lists on a page prior to kind of setting up for the week. If we kind of flip back, you can see that like Monday last week was here and then it was Tuesday, which goes across and then it was Wednesday and then it was Thursday and Friday and Saturday. So they all kind of just went one after the other after the other. Um, whereas this one, I kind of started writing out my Sunday list. And then when I was doing my weekly reset, I'm like, I need a place for my brain dump. I'll put it here so that then it can kind of follow over as much space it, as it needs to because at that stage I wasn't too sure how much space my Sunday was going to need so I'm like okay well we'll leave this space open for Sunday it can go over to here if it needs to and we'll just start the weekly brain dump here that one conveniently finished in one column <laughs> so then having the video planning space and the cleaning list space wasn't too bad to just tuck those in at the top I figured I'd put them in separate lists again so I didn't have to kind of predict how much space it needed to have. But yeah. So, Monday list. Things that we're doing here today together, all the good stuff, is very much a kind of just like journal update, getting in, getting things back up to where they're supposed to be in terms of filling in. So, for that, we need to uh, write the daily list, which we've kind of already done. So we're going to halfway cross it off. Love it. We need to update journals. And for this, we need to update the everyday journal, which is this one that we're working in. This is where I put all of my like everyday notes, task lists, all of that kind of stuff. 
every day. Bujo. And as part of that, we need to update the weekly page, which is this one. We'll just write the weekly spread because that's kind of what it is. So this is just making sure that my calendar boxes are kind of filled in with all the stuff that needs to happen, making sure that I've written out my priorities list. I think that most of them are looking pretty good. I think I need to go and add a couple more pieces of information to those ones in particular because they're looking a little light and I know there are other things that need to be done. Uh, we also need to do the start of journal pages because those are looking a little neglected. Start of Bujo, why not? And also the monthly pages because they're a little neglected as well. I have this tendency that anytime life gets busy, I start to not use my planner, which funnily enough is the worst thing that I could do because my planner, my journal, this guy helps keep me very much on track, but I have this, I don't know, maybe it's like a guilt associated with it. It's like, oh, why are you spending time writing in your planner when you should be getting stuff done? Like, you know what you're supposed to be doing. But then I also am acutely aware that writing everything down in here just means that I can tackle all of those projects with a lot more clarity. So I need to kind of get past this, uh, this, this like hang up on writing things down as a waste of time because it's not. It's kind of like the idea of meditation and mindfulness. I'm sorry, Vogel's just like sneaking up in here. Hey, Vogel, you got some receipts for me? Thank you so much. Alrighty, back to the train of thought. So it's sorry. like, <laughs> you're not sorry. No, I appreciate you. Bye. He's going to go and change the laundry over for me. What a gem. So kind of like the idea of mindfulness, right? Or uh, meditation. And when you're first getting into the meditative kind of process practice type thing, uh, it can feel like a little bit of a waste of time. Almost you're like, why am I sitting here for 10 minutes meditating when I should be going and doing other stuff and whatnot? But the actual practice of meditating and giving yourself that time to kind of, you know, be mindful, sit in your feelings, all that, whatever, actually means that you're then going to use the time following it a lot more productively and with more focus, yeah? Um, I don't meditate. I probably should, but anywho, my planner time is my meditative time. Like, I should write the things down so that I can then tackle the projects with more clarity and focus so I can make better use of my time. Anywho, that feels like a tangent. Where was I going? Okay, so everyday bullet journal, we need to do the weekly, the start of Bujo, and the monthly pages. And then we also need to check in with my yearly collections journal. I'm glad that some of you guys can, can relate to this. Um, also, hi Erin, such a pleasure to see you. <laughs> Yearly collections journal. Uh, so I've got some things to fill out in there. And then we also have my reading journal needs an update. And my work journal. Which is more like a work notes book. So we'll just write work notes. So these are the guys that at the moment I think need to have their update. I don't think we'll necessarily do them in this order, but that's what needs to get done. All right. Also, if you haven't already, like, tink, hydration is important, even if your hydration comes in the form of Coke Zero. <laughs> Distraction counter, ding, yep, there we go. Get myself distracted constantly. The first sip of the day. Ah, beautiful. I assume that people have a similar feeling with coffee or something. <laughs> Alrighty, we have a question. How can you join my YouTube membership? So if you want to join, um, you know, obviously no pressure. You are your own person. You can do your own things. But be below the video, if you're watching on desktop, there should be a join button there. And it breaks down our different tiers and the different perks that our different tiers get. Uh, if you're not on computer and you want to go over to mobile, there should be a memberships tab. I think, on the on on the, the mobile version, I'm not too sure. I haven't joined my own membership, <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully that helps. So, we're doing our everyday bujo first. We're going to start with our start of bujo pages. We're going to just start at the start of the journal and work our way through. I think that's going to be the easiest way. Aw, you're never awake for the lives. Well, I'm glad that you like them. I'm glad that you like the videos, and I'm I'm glad that you like the lives, even though typically you're not usually awake for them. <laughs> I, I know that we should do some other times for them. So with the, uh, you, you know, we talked about like, I don't know, a couple of minutes ago, the idea of Jess constantly putting off her population of her, uh, 
her, her finance tracker, I've decided that with trying to get better at this, I'm going to make it so that I only have to do it once a month and I'm going to do it at roughly the same time every month. So I've decided for that to be the first Thursday of every month is when I populate my tracker. I'm also going to populate it today because it's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. So all of these green dots here that don't currently have a symbol are me populating my finance tracker. But I need to figure out a symbol for them because I've already got a dollar sign for payday. So I can't use a dollar sign. But I need to need to have something for my populating of my budget. Uh, maybe like, I could do like a little E for Excel. That kind of makes sense. I feel like I need a thinner pen. Or it's actually an X for XL, isn't it? Because the, the little XL icon looks more like a little X. Alrighty, we're gonna do we're gonna do that because I do my my uh finance tracker is in XL. Could be like a dollar note. We don't have notes for dollars here. Our dollars are coins. But I like I like where you're thinking about that. That's actually a cute idea. I think that um. I think that just so that I can see at a glance what it actually means. I'm going to draw out the little kind of XL logo, but very abridged. So it looks kind of like a little box lying over the top of another box. The nice part is, is that it being green also matches with XL. So it's quite convenient. <laughs> um, but yeah, all of these dots in here just represent, for the most part, if they don't have a number, all of the dots represent a kind of a regular occurrence yeah um you did it because you're in melbourne nice <laughs> uh yeah so each of these dots that don't have a number in it just represent a regular occurrence and they have a symbol uh logged on the side here to tell me what they actually all mean there we go and i think that some of these won't necessarily happen on the actual day that they do and when i say some of these i don't just mean these finance ones even though i hope they do i'm thinking more about like the Boudreau Wednesday ones, there's probably going to be a, a week where we move Boudreau Wednesday or something because one of us is busy. But it just gives me a kind of general overview of what to expect for, for each of the each of the weeks in the next calendar year, pretty much. So this one, this, this future log, ranges from the start of October this year, so, you know, in like half a month or whatever, to the end of September next year. Because I don't usually see much point putting the month that starts the journal in the future log for the journal. So because this journal started in September, I don't really see much point putting September on the future log because I already have a monthly calendar for September. So if I was going to put anything in, it would just go on the monthly calendar. That kind of makes sense? Yeah. So we have those put in. And we have all of these other things and stuff. I don't think I have any future events that have come up at this stage that I need to record. She lied. I have my birthday plans, don't I? So I have a birthday dinner on my birthday, funnily enough. <laughs> uh, we're going to a Brazilian barbecue all-you-can-eat place. It's absolutely delicious. It is called Wildfire. If you've seen the vlogs, you may recall the place. Uh, which color is for social? Because we've got two different flavors. We have two different flavors of purple on this one. So we've got blue purple, which is for social, and we've got pink purple, which is for fun. So blue purple it is, because it is a social event. I will be inviting some friends to come along with me. Uh, so that is on the 11th. We can do a double dot for that. And then on the Saturday of that week, I'm having a little crafting kind of day with my friends too. So they can come over and we can do crafty stuff, which for me is usually just journaling, honestly. It's not super crafty, but <laughs> super crafty. Um, but they can bring along anything they want, any kind of creative project or work they want to do. So we'll put a three here and a three there, which represents page number three so that I can log those events over here. So on the 11th of October, we are having uh, dinner at Wildfire. Dinner at Wildfire. And then on the 14th of October, 
we are having crafty day. Just some, some chill time with my friends. So for the dots that go over this side, I typically just put a like a dot inside the dot, like a task bullet, uh, so that then once the event is passed, I can cross it off. So that then when I scan down this events list, anything that has a symbol is obviously a regular occurrence, so that one I can kind of ignore. But anything that has a cross, I'm like, okay, well that event has passed, I don't really need to focus on it anymore. So we can put dots in for those. I feel like I really should go in and put some more birthdays in here, because I put mine on my dad's birthday, but I haven't put in like my mum's birthday, or my brother's birthday, or Rachel's birthday, or like anybody else's. It's just that I didn't necessarily want to fill up my events panel with birthday reminders. I suppose. Oh nice, your birthday's on the 9th. Well, happy birthday for soon. Um, I hope you have fun plans planned for your birthday. Yeah. So that's the calendar next filled in. I don't have anything else that I need to add to that one. So we can flip on forward. So this is my 24 before 20, 24. Yeah. Uh, so 24 things that I want to do before the end of the year. And then this is the space for outlining my, uh, what's the word? like 101 things stuff. So any of the things that are on my 101 things list, I can pull out and populate into this space. So like do a month of planning, we're halfway through that. So we can half cross that off and make a Bujo basic series. It is getting there. We are, we are getting there. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be a big project, but I didn't expect it to last quite as long as it has. And it's probably because I don't, I don't like making the same type of video over and over, if that kind of makes sense. So with all of the content for that being very much like, you know, granular, just the basics, all of that kind of thing. I know that in the long run, it's going to be a positive thing to have it there, but actually making it, I start to get bored, but it's almost done. Anyway, so... The other stuff we have in here though, uh, these ones can be things from my 101 things list, or they can just be other little bits and pieces that I want to get done. Yeah. So for instance, like replacing my iPhone cables, that is not on my 101 things list, I think, but it sure as heck does need to get done. Cause look at this. Look, I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, look at that. That's a hazard. So yeah, I need to replace it. I keep putting it off because I'm like, well, the cable still works, but it's not, it's not safe. So I need to make sure that I actually do replace it. Uh, where, where are I, my, my child, my child, come here. So for this list here, it's really just a combination of whatever I want it to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be from the 101 things list. It's just stuff that I want to get done. Whereas these ones here are just from the 101 things list. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a safety hazard. So the 101 things list lives in my yearly collections journal. And it is, funnily enough, a list of 101 things that I want to do this year, in theory. Wanted at some point to do this year. So like celebrate turning 32, which I put as the 32nd thing because I like that kind of lineup. Uh, so that one is sitting in October, celebrate turning 32, because it's going to happen in October. Uh, I don't think there's anything on here at this stage that I want to pull out and specify to a particular month. Oop, I totally did seven consecutive days of exercise. And I know for some people that seems like a low bar, but for me, that's quite impressive. <laughs> and it took me until September to actually do it. Uh, that one happened in like, what, the start of last week? What was the start of last week? The 11th, the 10th, roughly? We'll say September 10th. September 10th, yeah, yeah, yeah. September 10th, yeah, yeah, yeah. But have Christmas in Australia with the fam, get hot jab donuts at the Queen Vic Market. Love it, we've already put that in. Uh, we can also put in have Christmas in Australia with the fam, so. 86 have Xmas in Australia and we've still got some space on here that I need to fill in uh, obviously I haven't gotten to that but we're not focusing on you yet 
go away. We're doing other things first. So I still have to pick out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more things to put on this list. I don't have any thoughts at this stage as to what I might want them to be, but something to think about. I can also cross off that one of these has been done. Yay! How exciting! Now I need to figure out which colour I want to use for it though. I think I will do pink purple and that is make a trigger list. We did that in the yearly collections. Nope, the other one. Long term collections journal as part of a live stream a couple of weeks ago. If you don't know what a trigger list is, uh, I'm getting a call. No, I'm not. I'm getting an aggressive, aggressive message. My phone uh, ringtone is, is very like the similar, the similar. It's similar for, for both my uh, calls and my um, text messages. So I'm just like, oh gosh, which one is it? Anywho. Got distracted. Trigger list is effectively a list of things that you read over to help you make a brain dump effectively. So it kind of gives you little pointers or prompts or whatnot that can get you to think about different areas of your life or whatever so that when you do your brain dumping you can be more effective in it and really get everything out of your head. Uh, so that is something that we set up in my journal. What else? Make a nice tea drink, have it done. Have a pumpkin spice drink. I don't think they get released until like next week or something. Set my 2024 goals we will do. Do Vlogmas, that's later. Finish the Boudreaux Basic Series. We're getting there, but we're not quite there yet. So the rest of these haven't been finished yet. Replace the iPhone cables, really need to do that. But I don't need to color any more of those in. All good. So flipping on forward. This one here is my work timetable and I haven't necessarily decided where things are going so I need to uh, put put some more thought into those and, uh, and, and actually go and map out when I want to do what kind of a thing. So that's not a right now task. This one is still kind of a work in progress. They're kind of related to each other. I need to review my time logging data and that one is like a bit of a project so I'm, I'm, I'm holding off on it. This guy needs to get filled in though. You can see that I started ticking things off but I have not made it the whole way down. This is the Boudreaux Basic series effectively. So these are each of the videos that I had left to make and these were all of the stages for making said videos. So I do need to go check those off. I actually need something to sit underneath my journal first though. So we'll find something for it to sit under, for it to sit under, to sit under it and then we will continue on. Ding. So I'm gonna use this notepad. Yep, that's big enough, like that. Just to give us, to, to level the playing field when it comes to writing in my notebook. So, in terms of each of the different stages, we have scheduling the video. All of the videos at this stage have been scheduled apart from a couple of them. So the year at a glance has been scheduled. The key has been scheduled. Migration of custom collections. I think that one has been scheduled. Let's go check my calendar. Yes, it technically has. We can tick that one off. Key ideas and index ideas. You guys have also been scheduled. Rapid logging has been scheduled. Signifies and bullets has been scheduled. Planning a monthly setup. Yep. And when to start. Yep. And then monthly log ideas and future log ideas. I actually already have videos on those topics. That's why they haven't been scheduled. So I haven't, I haven't specifically put them onto the calendar yet. Just because I'm not too sure if I'm going to make new videos for them. So they can sit there and, and think about what they've done. Anyway, so those guys are all scheduled though. These ones that already have ticks kind of coming down from them have already actually been uploaded. So the scripting has happened for each of them already. Tick, 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 tick. The writing has happened for them already, as has the drafting and the scaffolding of the filming and whatnot. 
and the filming has happened, we just need to tick like all the things. Editing, trim, pictures, b-roll, rewatch, yep, done, done, done. Then we get to the upload stage and some of them still have links that need to be put in because they rely on videos that haven't come out yet. Uh, and those ones I'm not too sure which ones still need links and which ones don't. But the nice part is, for each of those videos that I've uploaded, if there's one that has a video that hasn't been released yet, I've written in the description box the title of the video and coming soon. So if I search through my YouTube app on my phone, coming soon in my video descriptions, it actually shows up. So we can go and use that to help me find which ones don't actually have all of their links in, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't work on my computer. It only works on my phone though, which is a little bit frustrating, but it's fine. I do wish that uh, there was a little bit more consistency across the different device types, but at least the phone kind of, you know, being the way it is, is actually helpful to my cause. If they didn't have that feature on the phone, it would make it a lot more challenging. I'd have to go through every single video and check all of the description box for every single one, and that would take quite a while. Tick, 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 tick. These ticks are getting very sloppy. <laughs> Just trying to make sure that I at least keep them in the box that they're supposed to be in. And I feel like there are probably some of these ones that like didn't need a picture or possibly didn't have B-roll. They, they all had B-roll, but pictures in particular, I know some of them probably didn't, but I'm not gonna go through and recheck them just to make this as accurate as possible because that's not really the point of it. The point of it is me being able to say where I am in terms of the editing process for each of these videos. If the video is done, it honestly doesn't really matter if I checked off correctly or not, if it had you know, B-roll or if it had uh, pictures d related to that. So we're gonna tick off description for each of them because the description is at least correct. It's just the links that might not be completely filled in. Uh, they will already have had their materials. They already have their timestamps because I put them up at the time. They've already been added to playlists and they've got their cards and they've got most of them have their end screens. Uh, we will check that too. I mean, we not, might not check it here together right now, but it will be checked before they get ticked off. There we go, there we go, there we go. I feel like I need, you know those stamps that come pre-inked? The ones that have like an ink cartridge in them and you can just stamp? I need one of those for check marks. So I can just be like and yes, I could have just used my dot markers on this and it would have just been easier and I wouldn't have to put all these ticks in. But here we are. It's fine. Oop, that one was that one was close. I'm not supposed to tick that one off yet. Pay attention to what you're doing, please. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Captions, I haven't. Pinned comments, I need to check. Okay, so that looks pretty good. In terms of the scheduling, they have been scheduled and already done the I say promo it's not really a promo it's just me posting to say hey I have a new video uh, you might want to check it out it's not really big promotional work on my part uh, there we go that looks pretty good for now so some of these uh, will have already had their links in they will be fine some of them not so much yeah da -da -da -da. there we go Get back in there, better. So this one over here is the projects list and the projects that I have listed on this page are these ones, which are my weekly page making challenge or the a year of planning challenge. And so posting the prompts for each of those each week with a little description as to what it means. One that is exciting that's coming up is the idea of a hundred day project. So let's go, let's go do a calculation. Let's go, let's go ask Google. Where's where's my screen? Alrighty, so uh ah, oh my god! Good morning, me. Oh hi. Okay, so we're gonna say how many days until the end of the year, and it says ah, oh, rude. Can you just tell me? Can you just tell me? Like what is like one hundred days? before the end of the year. Date. <laughs> okay, da -da -da -da. 
Thursday, September 22nd, 2022. So, you know, whatever the 22nd actually is. What is the 22nd of September? We're not too sure. Let's go have a look. September 22nd. This guy here. Alrighty. So, next, this. <gasps> this? No. That doesn't make sense. Wait, what's the day? This is the day. Wait a second. That's 100 days before 31st. Yeah? No, that, that I can't do that kind of math in my head. This isn't going well for me. <laughs> okay. So, December has 31 days. And November has 30. So that takes us to 61. Plus October takes us to 92. 92, 92, 92, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Okay, sure, the 22nd-ish, or the 3rd, depending on how you calculate it. So, if you want to do something before the end of the year, and you want to break it up into 100 little equal parts, mm, then you could start yourself a 100-day project on the, on the 22nd, which is exciting. I like the idea of that. So that's just, you know, one, one general idea. <laughs> I know, right? I'm, I'm just like, can't even do maths in my head. What's going on here? It's all good. So that's something that I'm kind of looking forward to. And I'm, I'm trying to think to myself, like, what would be a good... Yeah, I know, right? I look it up and then I count anyways because I have low trust. <laughs> the trust is so minimal. <laughs> It's like any time that I try and use my grid spacing guide that I've got, I kind of put it against the page and I'm like, okay, okay, sure. And then I count it out again to make sure again. <laughs> so the 100 day project. I like the idea of this. I want to think of something that I could do across 100 days. It could be like, you know, just practicing doodling for 100 days. Or it could be, I don't know, trying to learn a new word every day for 100 days. Whatever it is. It's, it's just kind of... A, an exciting uh, little endeavor type thing but yes so in terms of this yeah it's not not necessarily if you travel for the holidays and then you're just like wait what's going on ah so this part here though is for vlogmas content and i still need to plan vlogmas still excited about vlogmas still looking forward to doing a video a day because that's how vlogmas rolls but need to actually figure out what it is we're going to do for it. I know that at least part of it is going to be like an end of year reset type thing because this year for my yearly reset, I didn't get the video edited until January and I'm just like, I feel like this would be better if it came out in December. So we're going to do some yearly reset type stuff. So I'm thinking like physical space reset. I'm thinking digital space reset. I'm thinking just like, you know, mental clarity reset, all of that good stuff. Unts, unts, unts. That is to be expected. Probably going to happen, but... We'll see what happens later. This guy here is my content calendar. And I am... I'm not necessarily the best at actually getting in and using it properly, I suppose. But it also doesn't help when your content calendar keeps... Changing. <laughs> I want to read for 100 days straight. Yes, love that. Ooh, excellent. Launch your website by the new year. That's super exciting. I love that as a goal. Um, talking about goals and goal setting. So... This live stream was supposed to be the one picked in terms of topic by uh, the team. Yep, yeah? the, the team with capital T. Instance. Uh, and they picked to do a goal setting kind of workshop type thing, which I'm super excited about. Do not get me wrong. We are totally going to be doing it. It's just that I think that it would be better suited to be doing a goal reset type thing uh, for the next quarter next week. Yeah, so currently we're sitting here. This is where we were supposed to be doing our team pick live stream. Uh, and we were going to do a goal setting workshop. But I think that for actually having uh, it be a little bit better timed, I'm pushing that to next week. So this time next week, or 44 minutes ago, but next week, we're going to be doing a goal setting together workshop type live stream. So if you want to do that, if you want to get your goals set for the last quarter of the year, then come along, plan with us. All of that kind of stuff. It's going to be great. But that does mean that the team live stream, which is team exclusive, team with capital T, that one's going to be pushed to the week after. So you're still going to get one for sure, 100%. Not about not fulfilling promises and all that. Uh, we're just going to push it forward so that then we can have that live stream be for the full community. If that kind of makes sense. Anywho, I feel like I've gone on another tangent. Anywho, this one here though. It was correct at the start of the month, 
but now it is not. <laughs> so I've moved a lot of these videos around. Like, uh, we've already had threading. That one happened a week early. And then rapid logging got pushed forward, and then the key has been moved, and then my grading has been moved down to here. So everything's kind of moved around. So this one isn't actually correct anymore, and I'm not really all that inclined to go through and, like, cut things out and stick things over or move things around so much it'll end up being a little bit too messy especially because i have now recorded this information on my yearly calendar yearly calendar monthly calendar words for this month here like most of it's already kind of recorded in here needs a little bit of updating so not going to update this one this one needs to be mapped out, but I'm not at the stage of having my content calendar sorted for next month just yet. So I'm not going to put it in now. Similar idea for November, December. Anywhere that this purple tape is, is in theory a day off. So just my birthday. I'm going to take a day off for my birthday. And then this guy here was for our anniversary. So we took two days off for our anniversary, which was nice. Um, and this is going to be my little Christmas break where I am hanging with my family and then coming back and being jet lagged. <laughs> yeah. You need to learn more about goal setting. Fabulous. Yep. Come along. We're going to, we're going to do some stuff like that together. It'd be fun. So this is my finances tracker. This is supposed to be for bills that come in each month, but I honestly couldn't tell you what bills we've had come in this month. And that is because I have not updated my finance tracker and I have no idea what's happening with my money. Oh no. Um, I've come to a realization that I have a very interesting relationship with money because, and I know that this is a very privileged thing to say, but for a good chunk of my adult life, I just haven't had to worry about having enough to pay bills and stuff like that. So I very much kind of took that and just let it become something I didn't really focus on. Like I track my finances for sure. And I think that part of why I was so able to not have to worry about it so much is because I have a lot of automation in paying of bills and um, I have money that gets automatically put into certain accounts to pay those things so I just didn't really have to worry about it but now as I work for myself I have to be a lot more mindful of how much is actually coming in and how much is going to different places because it's less aut automatic um, and that's why I'm trying to do this this kind of tracking and stuff but because I've never really had to pay all that much attention to it, you know, in the last however many years, it means that I'm not very good at actually setting myself financial goals uh, and, <laughs> and I guess, oh, what's the word? Like making them kind of like tangible and, and, and breaking them down into, into steps and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, and got to pay taxes. It's the worst. The worst. I, I liked it much better when my money just came to me after tax. <laughs> like, that was nice. <laughs> Otherwise, you get the money, like, sweet, I have this much. And then, at the end of the financial year, the tax man's like, no, you don't. I'm like, wow, that's, um, that's an upsetting amount that you're taking away right now. So, yeah. <laughs> now, as I need to worry about that, I actually need to pay a little bit more attention to it. But anywho, so I can't fill in the total saved or amount saved uh, until the end of the month for each of these months, anywho. But I do have to do these ones. I don't know how much I've saved for them, though. So I think that I'm going to add that to my task list as something to look up as part of my financial tracking uh, that we're doing, populating my finance tracker. It's going to be uh, calc savings added to account make sure it finishes where it should there we go account nice little account there <laughs> yeah ir3 sucks and i just i i don't understand why they called ir3s i think the thing that bothers me the most about tax and money and stuff is that like we made this system as complicated <laughs> as it is and it just doesn't need to be as complicated as it seems to be but we've made it like super complicated sigh anyways so this is my media log uh and this is effectively just where i track any kind of movies i've watched books i've been reading anything like that uh so i've already logged in the ones that i have been watching and reading and whatnot i know that vogel said that he wants to watch dungeons and dragons and i think that we're going to 
Yeah, I know. I say, yeah, I say we did this, Tina, but I, I mean like the human race. <laughs> like, humans as a collective have made a system that is is complicated. <laughs> not necessarily us sitting here together, because we know it's not it's not our fault. We didn't do this to ourselves, but somebody did this to us, and they were probably a person. Um, Good question. How many books have you read this year so far? We will be able to look at that once we get into my reading journal. And I will come back to your question because I can't remember the actual number. More than 10, less than 20, probably. <laughs> so, media don't have anything else to add to that one. We then have my health tracker, which I actually do have things to fill in. Okay, so I kept getting these two the wrong way around and that's why these little guys are sitting here because I kept forgetting which one was for physical health and which one was for mental health. So I have a couple of instances, I don't know if you can see them. I'll just put these here so I remember. Let's see, we'll see if I can actually show you. Uh, uh, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to be able to hold this very well. You see that, you see that little corner there that comes down ever so slightly? That's because both this box here for Tuesday and this box here for Tuesday are actually white sticker labels that I stuck over the top because I accidentally filled it in with the data from this one because I kept forgetting which one was which. <laughs> and that is why I have these little labels here to, to remind me. This is how you remind me of what tracker you are. Do, 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 do. So... In terms of my two goals that I've got here for myself, uh, like mini goals, habits that I'm trying to build, kind of a thing, this one is about movement. So the idea of doing at least two minutes of movement every day with the kind of high level goal being doing at least 10. And I know for some people, 10 minutes is not a lot, but, <laughs> but for me, actually doing that is quite an achievement. So the idea for this one is that I try and do at least two minutes, that's my low bar, and then my high bar is doing like 10 minutes or more. So for each of these days that are in pink, I did at least 10 minutes of movement. And by that I mean like pretty much just ellipt elliptical work. Am I talking exercise? I am talking exercise, but I'm not using the word exercise because my rebel brain is a hater. And if I tell myself that, oh, you should exercise, you should do that, then rebel brain says, stuff you, Jess, you can't control me. You don't have enough gym badges. So I'm using the word movement so that my rebel brain doesn't fight against me. <laughs> so for sleepy time, the goal for sleepy time is to be in bed ready for sleep by 11 p.m. each day. So any time that I am at least in bed by 11 p.m., I can have blue. Or if I'm actually in bed ready to sleep, like lying down, lights off, eyes closed, then I can have the pink. Yeah. Uh, so last night we got to bed it was 11.05 so technically speaking it was it was the low bar I, I managed to get to bed and was in bed by 11 but I wasn't sleepy time ready by 11 the night before however I was in bed earlier than 11 and I was ready for sleep at about 5 to 11 so that gets the pink yeah. and it's this thing that it's like it's effectively like partial credit, right? Like, the goal, realistically, is to be in bed, ready for sleep, uh, at, at 11 o'clock. But I also want to give myself credit for the fact that, like, at least you were in bed by 11 o'clock. Like, even if you weren't actually there ready to sleep yet, you were at least in bed, headed towards, tending in the right direction. So rather than taking a very binary approach to it, of being like you either were or you weren't, and then getting no credit for, for having done the thing, um, I'm giving myself partial credit here. And you can see that then I can see that, like, at least I was in bed, not necessarily ready for sleep, but I was in bed out, out of all of these days, most of them. This one here is in a light grey, and that's just to say, like, no, you did not get to bed until, like, 11.30. Like, actually getting into bed until 11.30 or something like that. Similar idea with this one. You know, we've set the bar quite low for myself because I am not the type of person who does any movement typically. So making it that it only has to be two minutes means that I've actually, for all of these days, done at least 10, which is, is quite an achievement for me. Um, 
And some of these days were just 10, like I got to my 10 minutes and I stopped. But one of these days was like an hour, literally. And one of them was, you know, 30 minutes or 20 minutes or like whatever. I've actually been, um, every time I get off the elliptical, I've been taking a picture to see <laughs> like how much time I've actually done. So that I could, uh, you can see them here. All of the ones that are in the blue, that's me taking a photo of the elliptical screen. So it's like, hey, look, you did 30 minutes and, and 24 seconds. Or, hey, you did 61 minutes and 37 seconds. Or, where's one that's really quite low? You did your 10 minutes and 4 seconds, so you get to check it off, you know? And it just gives my brain a little bit of, like, a little bit of dopamine to come here and colour it in it with a little pink box to say, good job, Jess, high five, you did the thing. So, anywho, yeah, tricking our brain into to doing things, which is nice. Tink! Exactly! And with partial credit, I get more colours. <laughs> It's one of those things that, like, part of me wants this to be filled with pink because it means that I did at least all, like, my ten minutes every single time. And part of me wants to be like, oh, more colours. I need a blue in there. I'm like, no, just do your ten minutes. That's the thing. The biggest barrier that I have to movement is honestly getting started. And I think that's the same for a lot of us in a lot of different areas. So if I set the bar quite low in terms of getting started, like, hey, you only have to do two minutes. Like, out of your day, that is not even, a, like, 1% of, of the time you spend, uh, you know, up and around doing things in a day. So then once I get to my two minute mark, I'm just like, well, it's only eight more minutes and I get to my ten. So I might as well just do eight more minutes. Often I'll put on some food in the oven or something for lunch and be like, okay, this has to sit in the oven for 12 minutes. I'll just jump on the elliptical for my 12 minutes. Like, rather than going back upstairs and stuffing around on my computer or whatever. Anyway. So, this guy here, this is my self-care bingo of stuff that I'm trying to do to just, like, take better care of myself. And roughly, roughly, I'm trying to do one per week. Because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16... 16 weeks until the end of the year. No, 15, because we're now on 38. And there are 15 boxes here. Uh, well, 15 boxes left. <laughs> One of them's coloured in. So I want to colour this guy in, because I did take a day off. And the colour we're going to use for that is just going to be purple, because why not? We'll do purple for that one. There we go. I'm trying to just use a combination of all of the different colours that I have used in this start of journal setup for colouring these in. Which means I need to go find where I put the blue because this blue, the darker one, that one's sitting in my pencil case. That one's fine. But the other blue is a calleograph and I put it away and I don't know which calleograph it was so I need to go look it up and get that pen out again so I can actually use it. But there we go. Would you consider an under the desk treadmill? I, I was thinking about the idea of it but my desk doesn't raise, so if I'm trying to do any kind of typed work, I would need to also get a standing desk piece to like raise my keyboard. Um, but I was I was considering the idea of it, um, which is a cool idea. So that's looking okay. We can flip on over. This guy is for my next journal planning. I don't really have a lot of thoughts to add to this just yet. The only thoughts that I've written down is that I want to do a 24 and 24, and I also want to do a 24 24s in 2024, which we will look at in a second. Uh, haven't done any sketching out for anything yet because I'm nowhere near the actual planning stage of that just yet. And then after this, we are into my monthly planning stuff which I do need to do my October planning. I was actually supposed to release my October plan with me oof, this weekend, but it didn't happen because I haven't set up for October yet. Wah -wah. We'll get there. I'm not there yet, but we'll get there. So I've started the rapid logging video. That's all good. Uh, I have technically started the migrating custom collections video but the rest of these need to be done. October plan with me needs to be done. My birthday plans I have started working on, but haven't gotten very far with. These guys, what else? I don't think there's anything in particular that has been done just yet. So that one can stay as is. My yearly, my yearly, get out. My monthly calendar is a little bit of a mess. We did the home meeting. Signifiers and bullets has been moved. October plan with me has been moved, so we need to push those forward with some arrows. So October plan with me is now going to be on Thursday. Which 
means I have until then to get this stuff sorted. We're doing the live stream, even though it's not necessarily the team pick. We're going to move that to next week. And we're going to do our team video tomorrow. That's all good. The seated ellipticals, like bike pedals, both look awesome. Yeah. I used to have an exocycle. Woo woo. Uh, like, you know, a standing bike or whatnot. But the seat on it was so bad. <laughs> it was the most aggressive seat that I have ever sat on. So you'd kind of sit on it for all of about two minutes. And you're like, great. My butt hurts. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so, AOP schedule, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get my calendar out so I can actually populate this because I think it would be good to have it filled in. For reference, just so that you guys can see what I see. What do your elf eyes see, Legolas? Right. Uh, window, window, window. So I plan my content in Notion. So you can see that there's like just a bunch of things that I'm kind of like just pushing around and stuff like this. Like these aren't actually on these days. That's why they just say ideas. But uh, rapid logging, we've started October bullet journal setup. So that one goes here. Uh, what did we say it was? Rapid logging. And then what is rapid logging? And then year at a glance year at a glance and then the key we'll put the key there and then signifiers and bullets sig and bull and just in case next week changes we're not gonna put it there just yet <laughs> all right yeah your stationary bike is awful like with the seat yeah yeah see it was one of those things that if if my seat was easily replaceable because I did try and look into replacing it because when I used to bike like with an actual bike uh, many moons ago I had a gel seat or something like that it was very comfortable to sit on so I did look into seeing if I could like replace the bike seat with the gel seat didn't work out sad face this space here is for my monthly task list um, I haven't needed to add anything to it just yet. I probably do actually have things that I need to add to it. Found some pencil, get rid of that. Uh, but I don't have any that come to mind right now, so we can leave that one for now. Now, this guy's my actions list of stuff that I need to get done for my goals or things that I want to work on for my goals. Uh, one in particular that I know has been finished is getting to 90 things on my 101 things list because my kind of soft goal at the moment is to get that list fully populated so like we had before we can see that i am currently up to 90 like i've gotten to 90 i still have 91 to 100 so 10 more things that i need to fill in for this list i just don't know what they are just yet but that is something to work on so that one's done in terms of my other goals that i'm working on we've got the weekly meal planning plans and this one is, I'm, I'm at a w weird place <laughs> with that. Sorry, I just saw Echo's comment, a stationary bike or a stationary bike. I love it. <laughs> Little bicycle made of stationary. I don't think that would necessarily do so well with my goal of actually getting moving uh, because it would probably fall apart if I sat on it. But anywho, so. This goal here is my weekly meal plans, so trying to make these kind of weekly meal menus. Technically speaking, I have already done a check with Vogel, but I need to do some more work. Uh, locking the not to get a meals we kind of started doing. I'm going to half cross, partial credit, proper sort remaining. Yeah, I need to, need to still do the proper sort, and then we need to pick one to trial. That's okay. Uh, for stretching, I have at least done some research about stretching routines, but I haven't actually started doing them. And that's because I started doing my daily movement instead. So I'm kind of focusing on that instead of the stretching. Uh, then we have the work batchable tasks. And this is constantly a work in progress. And it's one of those things that I got very interested in doing, did a whole bunch of work on, and then fell away with. And I don't know if I'm necessarily going to get back to doing it. I think I need to evaluate that goal and think about whether it is still something I want to do. Or like if it's something that I kind of want to put off until I have a bit more of a routine. I'm not sure. I, I feel like I'm explaining this poorly. But that one is is still much, like, kind of like a watch this space. 
finish the bullet journal basic series we're still doing 101 things list like we talked about is still happening we can half cross that off though assign tasks to months we have done some work on that Social connection. I still need to make my experiences wish list and I still need to finish scheduling October socials, but I have started with it. And then work routines. Need to review the time log data so that I can actually go and do a kind of weekly routine calendar block type deal. So, to be completed. <laughs> Show us that fugly watch. Yeah. Oh, get up in there. So smexy, but not really, according to somebody. I'm so sorry that my watch is not feminine enough for this channel. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't get it. I, um, it's, it's okay. If you saw my Instagram story, or if you're part of Moments That Matter and came to our hangout, I mentioned yesterday, uh, that I've been getting some comments recently that, like, I don't usually get very many of them. Usually when I get negative comments, I don't get very many. So it's not usually too bad to deal with them kind of thing. It's like a, okay, thanks for your opinion. You can move on now. What not? Um, and, uh, I, it's just in, like, the past week. Like, last week, this is a side note, okay? This is Distraction Counter 7. We can put it up there. Last week was a really busy week. So, last week I was, you know, doing the, the Bullet Journal Basics, trying to release a video a day, so there's a whole bunch of admin that comes with that. And then I also signed up for this boot camp that I didn't really necessarily understand the level of work <laughs> that was involved with it when I signed up for it, and that took up a lot of my time. Uh, not to mention that it was also timed smack bang in the middle of the day, which is usually my most productive hours, but anywho. So last week I've been feeling a little bit, a little bit stressy, a little bit stressed uh, about having a lot of stuff to do, thus why my planners have been neglected. But then I also seem to get a unseasonably large amount, and I say large with quotation marks because it's really not that many, but I got quite a few comments compared to usual just being quite negative, and I'm just like, my dude, I'm already not feeling super great. Like, why you gotta go and drop this on my doorstep? <laughs> so one of the comments that I got from someone, and if you're watching, yes, just know that this affected me this much that I have to talk about it here. Um, saying that my, what is it with women and ugly watches? First of all, the fuck? <laughs> Um, I'm sorry that my thoughts about watch aesthetics don't align with yours, but anywho. So they were saying like, you know, these electronic pieces of whatever and how unfeminine they are and whatnot. And I'm just like, I didn't realize you came to my video to see an aesthetic watch. So like, sorry about it. But anywho, I like my watch. I like the fact that it is streamlined. It fits my small wrist. It is, you know, originally it was used to track my steps, but now I don't leave my house. So hmm, I guess you're, <laughs> you're just for show, friend. Anywho, that's an aside. It's not, it doesn't really matter, but I think it was just the fact that I'd gotten that and a bunch of other ones that were all kind of like at the same time, and the watch comment was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> like, this is, the, this is just his back, and it was just like, <laughs> like, wow, my feelings. So lame. But it's cool. It's, it's only my feelings, you hurt. So... Yesterday we had our AM pill and our PM pill. We haven't had our AM yet because we haven't had breakfast yet. We have done this one and this one and this one and we did out. This one was supposed to be stretching but I just started to take it for like exercise doing as well. Because I'm like stuff it, partial credit. Tidy up, we did do a tidy up. We have done some daily logging today. We did our teeths, which is good. We did some teeths today. We did some flossing, yay for us. Finished work by seven, technically yes. Five-year journal, no. I did not fill in my five-year journal. There we go. I think the thing that bothered me the most about the comment was the idea of like equating the watch with not femininity. And I'm just like, I'm a lady, how dare you? This is a lady wearing this watch. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just don't think that we need to gender non-gendered items like the purpose is to read the time it, it it reads the time shrug but yes so that one's done in terms of this one we did the open task review yesterday as part of the brain dump we have now filled in the monthly layouts so i'm going to check that off we have now filled in the start of journal pages so i'm going to check that off as well because stuff it this is a continuation of the weekly reset and then we have the yearly collections to check in with 
inbox zero we did do organizing the brain dump i haven't that's something to do today to do today this one we're still working on but we can go back over to here and cross it off i apologize for my aside i'm trying not to let it bother me but i'm feeling incredibly bothered right now there we go weekly spread we haven't done yet start of Boudreaux, we have done monthly pages we have done we have partially done this so we can partially cross those off yay also i think it's about time tink <laughs> short and or purple hair on women is a red flag what the heck is that oh my gosh i think it's one of those like just let people be and I think that's what all of these comments have really bothered me. Like, bo the reason they've bothered me is the idea of, like, let's just let people be. So if you're not, you know, just as a... Because we're on the topic now. This is what I posted the other day, okay? So it's like, these are the kind of things that I've been getting comments about recently. It's the idea of gatekeeping using an index. Um, thoughts regarding me saying weekly log or daily log. Picking on my pronunciation of etc. Because they're like, it's not X. Cetera. I'm like, I'm sorry that I don't hard pronounce the T, but the next letter is a C, so I say etc. <laughs> anyway, somebody asked me why I hold my pen so weird, and then someone called my, my watch ugly. So I'm just like, guys, like, usually I'm not so bad with it, because usually I don't get them, and it's like a one-off kind of thing, and I kind of like have a chuckle about it or whatever. But I think it's just because it was a stressful week, and I got so many of them all at once that I'm just like, this isn't the business. We're parking that, all right? We're taking the tiny car. We're gonna like mop all of that up and we'll put it away. Done. <laughs> Next one to do, yearly collections, all right? So we can scoot this journal over to the side because this guy needs some updating because he's been being neglected. He's being neglected. <laughs> Do you love the tiny car so much? Isn't it so cute? It's got little like brushes on it and it's for pencil erasing. <laughs> it's so cute. My mum got it for me. I think her friend got her one and I liked it a lot. And then she's like, oh, I'll get my friend to get one too. It's like so cute. Dee, 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 dee. Anyways, we'll put the tiny car away. I don't keep a lot of clutter on my desk uh, because I don't really like to have a lot of clutter. But the tiny car and Timmy the tiny turtle, they, they are the ones that I have on my desk. They are my, my, my friend. This is t Timmy the tiny turtle. Yeah. We'll put Timmy away. Timmy and the tiny car. So... In terms of this one and updating this guy, uh, I don't have any 101 things that I want to add just now. I know that I'm going to make them quite small things, mainly because we don't have like that much of a year left. Okay, she says this. We have like a third of the year left. Okay, we don't. We have more like a quarter. Shh. Anyways, bad maths. So we've got a, qu a quarter of the year left. Like that is enough time to get some stuff done. But I want to try and give myself some tiny wins. I think I, I need some tiny wins right now. So I'm going to populate that with things that are fairly small, but stuff that I want to do. So that's that's a someday maybe problem, is to, to figure that out. This guy here, 23 23s in 2023. So doing 23 things, 23 times in the year of 2023. I did just hit my elbow on my desk. And yes, it did hurt. <laughs> I'll be fine. Oh my gosh. So on this page is where I just record the kind of completion rate or like how many of each of them I've done. And then on the subsequent pages, I write down the specifics of those things. So of the TV show seasons that I've watched, which ones have I watched? Of the new artists that I've listened to, like who actually were they? So writing that kind of stuff down. Movies we've already finished. TV show seasons, I haven't watched any new ones. The new artists, I haven't listened to any new artists as of current. So we can flip that over. All goods. Thank you for being here for your first time, Andrea. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us. And then podcast episodes. I actually finished that a lot sooner than I thought I was going to because I didn't think that I listened to podcasts so much, but it turns out I do. You can probably see this shiny tape in the middle. That's because I was worried that this was going to start separating more than it already has. So I stuck it together. Games played. Don't think we have any new ones to add there. Meat-free dinners. So... I was kind of in two minds about this, like, I wanted to record them as meat-free dinners and only record 
each type once. So it's like, you had agedashi tofu, you can write it down, but the next time you have agedashi tofu, you don't write it down again. So it was like 23 different ones, but that's like quite a lot. <laughs> so I think that I probably should have at the start of the year just kind of recorded every single time I had one. So maybe rather than the type of meal, just recorded the date that I had the meal. But I didn't do that, so this is what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, oh my gosh, I know, right? Penelope's onto it. 2024 is going to be a beautiful year with all those factors that 24 has. So even, absolutely glorious, I know, right? I, um, I, I, I really love how you can set things up with the number 24 just because there are so different, like so many different ways that you can set it up, right? So, for instance, in this guy currently with my 24 before 2024 we've got like a 4v6 kind of a thing but you could do you know it's got like factors of three it's got factors of four it's got factors of six it's got factors of 12 just like lots of different options love that for us Alrighty, so dates with vogel we had stay in we had our games day we had our anniversary brunch and whatnot we haven't had any since then i do not believe we haven't tried any new foods or at least i haven't people in general probably have but not me we have just for fun slash long-term collections layouts. Have I put all those in? I believe I have because I wrote in all of the ones for my my reading journal. So that's okay. This one's looking pretty good. The Midnight Library. Yep, read that. And now I'm reading Throne of Glass. Technically haven't finished it. So not going to put it in just yet. Haven't had a new hair mask or face mask since then. 20 minute workouts though. Aw, yes. Go Jess. Sell five. Mm we can totally put some of these in. So this is where me having taken all of those pictures is very useful because I can record the ones that were 20 minute workouts and not the ones that weren't. So September the 9th. Let's see. You are the 10th? Yeah. So on the 10th, I did 30. So that counts. So it's September 10th, and then on the 11th I did 22, September 11th, and then on the 12th I did 35. See, and this is the thing that I was talking about, like, the expectation for me is only to do two minutes, yet making it so low, I end up doing more. Yeah? That idea, the hardest part is just getting started. So let's just get started. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I've got like all of these screenshots from the Halloween release. And scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. This one was the 13th. The 13th, I only did 10. All right, so 10 minutes, four seconds. Can't, can't have that one on my list. But the next day, ha ha ha, I did 20 minutes and one second all right so that one counts that one is the 14th of september and then the next day i did 20 minutes 20 minutes and eight seconds <laughs> so that is september 15th I'm feeling quite good about that huh. I chuffed myself <laughs> but then on the 16th we only did 10 minutes and two seconds so that one doesn't count. And actually, just as a side note, because you guys are here with me, I have um, my other hobby, like along with, you know, journaling, creativity and stuff, is taking pictures of car number plates. And we saw this car number plate the other day. I don't think you can see it. Like, just ignore the guy in the back. But it says Lapras, and it was like a big blue, like, four-wheel drive. And I was just like, oh, that's cute. So, Lapras. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. You like the way I write my S's? <laughs> and then the next one here was the 17th, and that was 28.30. So that counts. That was, what did we say, the 17th? Yep. September 17th. And that was yesterday. So that's us up to date with this. So we log those things in here. We write down the dates that they happened. And now I can go fill in my tracker up to number... 16. Okay, where is my pen? Me dot pen. I've got, I've got a lot of dot pens out at the moment, so it's just finding the right color. 
So this guy is up to the 16. So workout, no, that's work free. 20 minute workouts. 16. Yeah, look at that progress. Isn't that exciting? Dee -dee -dee -dee. This one is too small, but oh, I don't want to go over it because it becomes really dark. Be lighter, be lighter. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that you love light for us. That's exciting. Yeah, we were sitting there at the lights just being a no pouty because we were at the lights. And Fogel was like, oh my God, look at the lamp for us. You have to take a picture of it. I'm like, okay, I'll take a, I'll take a picture. Oh my gosh. That's quite exciting. I, yeah, I like, I like custom number plates, especially the ones that I actually can understand what they're trying to say. <laughs> um, because sometimes I can't. Wah, wah. So that looks good. Uh, we've got a couple of others to just check through to make sure that we've done them. So someday maybe tasks completed. There are possibly more, but we actually have to go and look at the someday maybe tasks to see if there are any to check off. And live streams all done. And bonus videos. Technically speaking, the whole of the bullet journal basic series is bonus videos, uh, but I haven't been including them in here, so technically maybe yes well we will we will wait and see what happens at the end of the year if i need to give myself some credit i'll give myself some credit uh collabs we're already done with those so these are mainly video collabs with other usually brands um so if they send me something to feature in a video or something like that i'll just put it down on the list product in my shop we have put seven products in the shop this year which is quite exciting it took me quite a while to get the printables into the shop i kept meaning to do it and then eventually finally got it done and i'm really glad that people like the fantasy map as much as they do because i really like the fantasy map um and it's nice to see like people have been sending through their pictures to say like hey i printed it off and i stuck it in my journal too and i'm just like oh so sweet if you have no idea what I'm talking about, this is the fantasy map. So this is in my reading journal that I've set up for myself. And each of the different places are based on like a, uh, like a reading trope or like something like that. Um, so we have like the DNF planes. So this is where all of the, the do not finish books goes and like the all nighter rift and the one bed in and the faded mates, which are two islands. And we've got sunshine and grumpy here. So that's kind of cute. Anywho, I love this map. I love the fantasy map and I'm really glad other people like it too. I love the OTP, this one. It's like, I will go down with this ship. <laughs> oh, like, I'm glad that you have it in your journal. That's so exciting. But yeah, I, I'm glad that people liked it. Yay for the fantasy map. Anywho, that is an aside. We are still doing this. That one's done. Now it's on to these guys. So we can fill in the book club book for October and I need to track my spending days. I've been very bad at putting these in, to be honest. And because I haven't done my populating of my finance tracker, I can't fill in my spending. Uh, okay, I need a pen color. Which pen color is it? Purple. So the way that I fill in this little book club space uh, is by writing out the book title and the person who wrote it. Um, to say like this was the winner this is what we read and then underneath it i write down the prompt that we were working with in terms of the uh i don't know we spin a wheel <laughs> it's got book prompts on it and then and then we pick a, pick books based on that based on that prompt so the midnight library was mid midnight library is by matt haig h a i g and then our book for next month is How to Take Smart Notes. How to take smart notes. And do I remember who wrote it? No. So we're going to have to look it up. How to Take Smart Notes by I'm not going to try that one because I know that the little dots probably changed the pronunciation. Nope. Don't even do it. Don't even do it. <laughs> Aaron's. A H R E N S. I have been quite blessed with, um, not necessarily the last one because mental fitness just wasn't the business in terms of a book. Like, 
I mean, there were probably good takeaways there, but it was... I think it's one of the, um... How do we, how do we word this? The points in the book were probably quite good takeaways. It didn't feel like a lot of new information for me, but that's just because I like to read a lot in this space in particular. And it felt like the book was very weighed down with kind of justification as to why the stuff worked, but not necessarily from the author's own research. Like, it was, like, their research and the fact that they had, like, you know, researched what other people had done in the space, but then it was kind of just reporting on their findings. I don't know. I feel like I'm explaining this poorly. I think the worst part about it was is that in looking at the book on Goodreads, it had quite a high rating, but it only has 41 ratings, and I think that's why it probably had as high a rating as it did, and it felt really bad. I, ha I don't think I've even put a rating on it. I can't remember. But going on and just being like, yeah, uh, this wasn't for me. <laughs> I usually don't write reviews. I just put little star ratings anyways. Anyway. So this one here was owned but not read. So... But not red. That was the read theme for the month. And my one was a new to me. Read. Do not ask me what that means. <laughs> I think that initially it was the idea of, like, it's not something that's necessarily on your TBR already, so it's something that, like, you've only just recently come across or something like that in picking out the book. Also, like, look at that. Look at that shiny gold down there. So pretty. So shiny. But when it sits down like this, it just looks like a black spot. <laughs> I needed to prove that it is actually shiny. It's very pretty. Anyways. So, this guy here in terms of like the head-to-head -head, it was just like two books that weren't necessarily already on my tbr so it was how to take smart notes versus show your work which is i think the idea of like sharing your artistry and stuff online and whatnot so i'm interested to read this though i think this will be a good book i also we've we've organized the book club so that on our birthday months we're the ones who are putting the little uh, poll together and whatnot. So Rachel's was July and mine is October. We've been talking about how the book club is going to run next year and I'm very interested to see what we actually end up with in terms of it. Um, but yeah, also tink. Oh yeah, a cross-reference system. I'm excited to learn more about it. So on this page, we write down our yes spend days and our no spend days. Uh, in particular, if I did spend, then it gets a black dot because it meant like I wasn't supposed to spend. But if I spent unnecessarily, effectively. Uh, whereas if I spent, but it was something that was kind of like pre-agreed on uh, in, in a certain category or whatnot, like bills, then that's, that's fine. So you can see the kind of rules down here. So things that are exemptions for spending money on are things like bills, groceries, essentials, any kind of pre-planned and agreed upon purchases. Whereas things that are not exemptions are last minute, non-essential purchases, non-pre-planned food out, non-pre-planned fast food and other. So yesterday, for instance, we did go out for food, but that was something that was pre-organized. We ate at the place that we had planned to eat, like all of that kind of stuff. So that doesn't actually count as having like broken the rules, if that makes sense. So that was the 17th. On the 17th, yes, we went out for food, but no, it did not break the rules. On, uh, what was the day before that? Saturday. I think we did break the rules on Saturday because I'm pretty sure we got fast food for dinner. And we did that on Friday as well. <laughs> so two dots for that. Wah -wah. No, we didn't get fast food for dinner. We got fast food for lunch. And then the day before that, we got fast food for dinner. And then the day before that, we had takeout, but it was pre-organized takeout. Uh, we had gotten FOMO, which is like pho. Yeah, FOMO, pho. Um, that was very tasty. But that one was not a breaking of the rules because it was pre-organized. For the 13th. What day of the week was the 13th? I guess that was the Thursday. Thursday, get out, Wednesday. And that was not broken because it was Bujo Wednesday and we had food at home. And then on Tuesday, we had food at home as well. So that one was all good. Yay. Usually the thing that breaks the rules for me is food out. 
like it's just a it's just a um, my weakness area my my area of weakness in your past video when you set up that layout did you go over the challenge page in detail do you mean this page like the book club challenge or or wait a second i don't know which challenge page you're you're talking about um, you let me know which one in particular, and I will explain it again, or tell you where I explained it. Um, s s hope that was helpful, it probably wasn't. <laughs> it was like so not helpful, I apologize. Uh, so, this guy here is my kind of, it's like a weekly habits type tracker. Um, oh, okay, excellent, the spending challenge. I think that we did have a... I, I must have explained it in the setup video for this because the setup video for this was just the setup video for the whole um, like from the kind of title page through the 101 things all of that I explained it in that one but yeah I think that uh I think it was probably just like a, an aside or like a, a a slight overview kind of thing I didn't do a specific video on it but yeah, it's effectively just like me trying to be more intentional with my spending. So it's okay if I spend money in these like problem categories, provided it is pre-planned and pre-agreed upon. So like if in our weekly meal planning, because my, my problem area is food. Um, if in our weekly meal planning, we decide on Thursday, we are going to be getting, I don't know, takeout, like I don't know, pizza or whatever. We're going to get pizza for dinner. That's totally fine. It is pre-agreed upon. We have decided, like, actively, that is what we're going to be doing. Um, but if we get to Thursday, and let's just say pizza is closed or whatnot, then unless we have food at home, like, you know, we're just like, oh, we'll just, you know, have toast or whatever. That's cool. Whatever. You didn't spend any money. If we then go and get pizza from, like, another pizza place, that's cool. Like, it was, it was still intentional. You were supposed to, supposed to get pizza. But if we go like, oh, pizza's closed, we'll just get Burger King. Like, that's non-intentional spending, yeah? Thankfully, we haven't come across any uh, specific instances like that. But it's just trying to get us to be a little bit more mindful about spending our money. And if we are spending our money, making sure that it's kind of pre-planned. If that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Hoopa! Let's see. Hoping for a full grid A&O. Interesting. Is there any hope for it? I, I don't know. I I would be interested to see a full grid notebook from Archer and Olive. I don't necessarily hold out a lot of hope for it. We haven't gotten a lot of very different paper types. Like, we've had lined and we've had uh, blank. And we've got dot grid. So, I mean, to complete the, the core four, it would make sense to have a full grid. But... I guess we'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, so this guy here, this is my uh, weekly habits tracker kind of a thing. So I can check off to say, have I been doing my weekly habits? Like, these guys are monthly. These guys are weekly. But in terms of the week numbers, so we've got 52 week numbers in here. And these are related to this calendar in particular. Like this is how I number my weeks. So the first full week of the year is the one that gets number one, yeah? So currently, it being September 18th, like we just finished up week 37. So in week 37, I did do the towel laundry. In week 37, I did not have a day off. In week 37, I did have time out of the house. In week 37, I did my laundry. In week 37, Vogel did the grocery shopping, not me. Uh, did the meal planning, did a weekly reset. So we can put a black dot over the grocery shopping because Vogel did that. And the bathroom cleaning, again, I've like set it up in my mind that the bathroom cleaning is like one big, you cleaned the whole thing to completion. But I don't work that way. I usually like clean the toilet one day and then like wipe down the sink another day or like whatever. So I need to address this for next year. I should write that down. Now that I'm having that thought, I'm going to write that down. Just jumping in here and putting this guy back into its little pocket at the front so that then it's safe. We're going to write in my next journal notes to say, like, something needs to happen with the bathroom cleaning. Bathroom cleaning breakdown. 
because then it's that idea of partial credit, yeah? This type of system is very much like, did it happen or didn't it? So grey dot, it happened, black dot, it didn't. But that doesn't give me any credit for having done like a half job or part of a job or anything like that. If you break it down into smaller steps, then you get that kind of little dopamine kick that says, hey, you did part of the thing. It's all good. I think that one's going to be in a... So it's keep, scrap, change, and try. So this is kind of like a change slash try. So we'll put them in both because it is technically a tweaking. But it's also something that I'm going to be trying out. Alrighty. Cool, cool, cool. So we had a question. Any tips about setting up a mood tracking year in pixels? Love it. Alrighty. Biggest thing that I would recommend is make sure that you predefine the kind of moods that you're paying attention to. <laughs> it's probably the easiest way to, to, to go about it. I find that uh, one of the things with a mood related year in pixels or mood tracker is knowing what um, what moods in particular you're actually going to be focusing on and also knowing how it is you're going to be uh, logging the type of mood for each day, yeah? So I know that a lot of people who come and talk about mood trackers in a more negative sense, uh, they talk about the idea of like, oh, well, what if you have multiple moods in a day? Like, you can't use it. I'm like, okay, calm down, negative Nancy. Like, there are ways around this. You are a creative thinker and I have faith in you. Um, so I found that I'm going to go get you a journal. One second. Whoosh. This guy here, question mark. Are you the right journal? Yes. Okay. So previously when I have done mood trackers, I have looked at different elements of my mood. Or I have looked at how I can record different varieties of mooding in one day. Let's see, it's in May. So this is an example, yeah? So my mood, I just did it on a kind of like positive to negative scale. Like was I in a, a good mood or a bad mood type thing? But some days, you know, you'll have a majority of your mood is quite good. And you're feeling quite good about yourself. But then there'll also be parts of the day that just like were really a kick in the pants. <laughs> yeah. So for instance, on the 18th here, like for the most part, it was a really good day. But there was also a tinge of it that really wasn't. Yeah. I tried to not let that ruin my day, but there was distinctly part of it that just wasn't so positive. So I just record both colors. Yeah. If you're doing it as a year in pixels, obviously you're only got like a very small box to work with. Uh, so you might want to think about like, do you kind of divvy the box up in half or something like that? Vogel's here. He's sneaking up in here. Now he's running away. Distraction! All right, fine. Bye, Vogel. So do you want to divvy the box up or something like that? So that then you can say like, hey, the morning section of my day was fairly good or like the evening section of my day was fairly good or whatnot. Or like we've got in the chat here, like, yeah, but you can put it in three sections. So morning, afternoon, evening type of a thing. Um, or what I did here, it wasn't necessarily a, uh, you know, s s strict percentage kind of speaking. It is just like, hey, it was a good day. I did enjoy myself, but there was an element of it that wasn't great. That kind of a thing. So that's one thing to think about. Um, like, do you want a scale that's just like positive, negative, or do you want uh, ones that are like a bit more descriptive type thing? Um, another thing that I've previously done, I'll go grab that for you, which is like kind of mood related, maybe not, but we'll go have a look at it. I shall show you in a second. I believe it was in this journal. Yes, it seems to be. So for this journal, I did a mood type tracker. So I did it based on three categories. So I had like my stress level for the day. Was it like healthy amounts or like an unhealthy amount of stress? Uh, general happiness, like was I in a good mood or a not so good mood? And then motivation, like how kind of, you know, proactive was I feeling? Was I getting in and doing things and whatever else? So I was rating it on these three areas. How are things going? So that means that on a day that I was stressed, but still like was happy about it, I could record both of those things, right? So for example, if we take this day here, so we have a bright green, so I was feeling fairly like happy, was in a good mood. Uh, we have a bright red, so I had fairly high motivation for that day. And I had 
pale yellow or like bright yellow so I didn't have a lot of stress going on. Comparing that to this day, I was in a good mood, like I was feeling happy, even though my motivation was low, because that's a dark red colour. And then my stress level was not so bad. And this guy here, I was stressed, I was not so happy, but I was feeling motivated. So that kind of thing. You can kind of get some, some variety and differences in it based on what you're tracking. And I did a similar idea to this one in this guy here. So the same three points that I was focusing on. So it's like, was I stressed or was I relaxed? Was I feeling apathetic or was I feeling motivated? Was I feeling sad, down or angry? Or was I feeling like happy, joyful or content? So we've got days where, for instance, the ninth here, I was feeling happy, joyful, content type of a thing, but I was still stressed and I was feeling fairly apathetic. So I was apathetic and stressed, but I wasn't so sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of a thing, if that kind of helps. Um, so that's kind of how I like to do this one. So each of them gets multiple colours, uh, and then you kind of have your little key here that helps you distinguish between the different stuff. Um, let's see. So obviously these ones aren't so much years in pixels. They are um, you know, on, a, on a monthly basis. But you can set up a similar type system for a whole year. Uh, you just need to be a little bit mindful about how you go setting it up so that then you can actually get information out of it. Whatever information. Yeah, I was stressed, but I was happy about it. Exactly, Amy. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that journal back on the shelf, trying to keep my space tidy. But yeah. Hoopa. So, in terms of a year in pixels though, because obviously a year in pixels is often used with re relation to moods. You don't have to use it for moods as well, which is nice. I know you're you're planning on doing that. Uh, I can't remember who said the comment, apologies. But you know, this technically is a year in pixels as well. Like we have a little box for each of the days of the year and I'm recording, did I break my no spend or did I, uh, was my spending aligned with it, I suppose. But yes. So this guy's filled in. That dot is really big compared to the other dots, but it's fine. It's also time for a drink break, tink. Yeah, you've tried a mood tracker, but it wasn't doing so well with it. That's fair. I um, I don't typically set up mood trackers. I used to set up a lot more of them, but um, it's not something I'm focusing on at the moment. So, this guy here, hair dyeing. <laughs> like, you can see how often I come and check this in because I have stuff for August that I haven't checked on. Like, converting notes to content ideas. I didn't do that in August doing my hair dyeing. I didn't do that. I don't think we had an early access video specifically. But we're going to probably have a lot of that in Vlogmas season, so that's good. Life admin day. I really wanted to start those up this year, but I didn't do it. Did you forget to dot the, oh yes, the day off. I didn't dot the day off because I didn't have one. <laughs> so it's gone. Bye. There we go. Thank you. My, my apologies, journal, for, for leaving you out in the cold. So, we have done tracking printables, da -da -da -da, live stream we haven't done yet, that's happening later. Lettering practice we have done. And then hangout we did this weekend, which is always a good time. Haven't done a hair dye, haven't done shaping nails twice, only done it once, haven't had a life admin day, monthly reset in theory happens at the end of the month. I have not been doing very well with that these years. These years? Those this year. Meh. Oh well. And then we have the future me problems. So some of these might have been done, probably not. Let's see. Reset the laptop, make a list of my YouTube playlists, Spotify, office inventory, swatches, art cart dividers, daily routines, jump mail, pencil case storage, stick storage. Da -da 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 -da. So for this part, I really just run my eyes over the list and see if there's anything I've done. And then if there are any I've done, I can add them into my 2323s in 2023 to say like, hey, you did a thing. Good job for getting some of those future me problems actually done. Vince wishlist is on here and I, I really want to do that. Have a drink of Here's my ideas. So, the reason that this collection is in my yearly collections is so that I don't have to write it out with every new journal. Um, 
and also so that at the end of the year I can go through this list and do a proper migration process and think like, are these things still stuff that I actually want to get done? Because I, I can assure you at the end of the year, some of these I will have decided, you know what, I just don't give a toss anymore. Um, for instance, one of them was edit the 2022 vlogs and I've just crossed it off. Like, I'm not going to do it. Um, it's, it's <laughs> the ship has sailed. <laughs> so brainstorm short of labor, brainstorm topics, acrylographs watching. I'm thinking about getting rid of my acrylographs actually, because I just don't use them. And I just, I don't like the idea of things taking up space in my office that I'm not using. Uh, my wish list. Bah. Replace the iPhone cables on here, and that's probably why it got added into my 22 things to do list. Alrighty. Ooh, alrighty. I've got a question. I'm coming back to your question. I'm going to read this list first. Bin schedule in the calendar. Yeah, need to do that. Membership post templates. I've kind of started doing that. Actually, I think I have finished doing that. So we can cross that off and go and add that into our little log of Sunday maybe tasks that I have been doing. So, membership post templates. Because we have like a monthly fulfillment on the different perks that the members get as part of their membership, I um, I don't want to have to try and reinvent the wheel every time I write the description and stuff for posts. I, I yeah, I just... <laughs> I'm not that creative when it comes to writing, so I would rather just have some templates that I can use to help myself out. Sunday movie tasks done. Poink. There we go. Cute. Continuing on. Bin schedule, da da da. Files, electronic basket needs to be reviewed. Make a playlist. Organize these. Da 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 da. That's looking pretty good. I want to do some stationary decluttering. At some stage, that'd be a good idea. All right, I think that's good. Excellent. Okay, so the question was, I have a dilemma. Da, da, da. Alrighty, wondering if you give me some advice. I only have space for one more month in the planner, but I don't want to put the last two months in a brand new planner. What do you think? So, that is a great question. Um, I guess there are a couple of options here. Like, do you actually only have enough space for that one month? Like, is it based on the idea of like the way that you plan currently, you only have enough space for one more month? Or could there be some way that we like kind of tweak or fudge that so that then you're streamlining your process and you can fit more space in? That's one idea. I don't personally like to restrict myself. So that is not the route that I would take. <laughs> Um, what you can do is that if you don't want to start a brand new planner kind of a thing, or at least not start a brand new one that's going to be one that you carry forward with, is there a different notebook that you could use to kind of tide you over? Yeah. Um, so for instance, last year I had uh, a B6 journal that I was using for the last couple months in the year. I had, I was supposed to fit four months in there. I couldn't fit four months in there. Uh, not with the way that I like to plan. So for November, I decided to do a digital planner for that month. I went digital for the month of November, then came back in December and finished out the notebook so that I could finish the year in an actual journal. If I were to do that again, I would probably be more inclined to use just like a tiny notebook for a month rather than go with a digital system. So it's like, is there another notebook that you have that you can use to help tide you over? Because if I were to do it again for last year, I probably would have just used a little pocket notebook and I would have set up the nice little cute layouts just for a month um, or, or in your case, two months. But yeah, it, it very much depends on your personal preferences. Ugh, this notebook is so cute. Anywho. So, squeak, says the chair, squeak, says the chair again. In terms of our process of events, we have done the yearly collections check-in, which is excellent. And make sure it's dry. We can also check off for our weekly reset, because that's effectively what we're doing together, that the yearly collections have indeed been checked in with. All right. So, 
flipping back, flipping back. The next thing to check in with is the reading journal and making sure that we have checked things off in there and filled things in. So in my yearly collections journal, we saw that I do have a space for the book club in here. But now as I have a reading journal, I'm probably not going to put this book club page into my yearly collections journal next year. Instead, I'm going to have a space in my reading journal for that stuff. So, open up my reading journal. If you haven't seen my reading journal, this is my reading journal. It's a recent addition to my planner lineup, so it doesn't necessarily have everything filled in just yet. Uh, so The Midnight Library was the last book that I read, and I'm currently reading Throne of Glass. I have not finished it yet, so I will not be recording it just yet. There was a question before as to how many books that I have read this year. Let's do a count. One, two, okay, we're not going to count like that, that's ridiculous. Uh, one, two, three, four, here we go, it comes down to nine, eighteen, there we go, eighteen books. That's how many I've read. <laughs> Which for me is pretty dang good, because my reading goal that I set for myself this year was to read twelve. Because um, I, we have our book club, uh, we, we read one book per month, so I was thinking if I read all of the book club books, I will read 12 books this year, and that's where I set my kind of goal. So I'm, I'm very impressed with myself that I managed to hit that 12 earlier. But yeah. Oh, aw, thank you, Lenny. That's so sweet of you. I'm struggling, uh, the super chat that is, let's go read your comment now. Okay, so I'm struggling setting up my goals in my new video, and I want to set goals related to organization instead of areas of my life. I don't know how. Any advice? So we are doing a goal setting live stream next um, next week. So make sure that you come along to that if you want to like look at our goal setting process for the rest of the year. Um, so let's see. Struggling setting goals in your new journal. Need goals related to organization instead of areas of your life. Alrighty. So I guess the tricky part with that, I guess, is like which stuff are you trying to organize? Because if I'm thinking about organization, my immediate thought is to think about my different life areas. And I know that's not something you want to do, but it's like for organization, I was like, if I'm organizing, do I want to organize my physical space? Do I want to organize my digital space? Am I trying to organize like any kind of mental clutter type thing? So I think that unpacking the idea of what you want to organize is probably a really good starting point with that. Um, then once you know in particular which types of organization you're focusing on, I find it's really helpful to think about end outcomes. Like what does the best version of having completed this goal actually look like for you? So if we take it from, we'll just talk about office organization because I think physical space is an easy one to kind of think about. Like in organizing my office, so what does an organized office actually look like? What does it feel like? You know, am I trying to aim for organization where it's like I only have the things that are actually essential or do I want things that I have, you know, on hand even if they're only stuff that I use maybe once in a blue moon or like whatnot. Um, yeah, so setting, setting yourself some kind of expectations around what you actually want the thing to look like because then backwards planning from that is a lot easier. It's probably the biggest starting step. Don't want to give you too many steps at once. That's how we get overwhelmed. Yeah, what type of organization do you actually want to do? And what does the end outcome or like the best outcome for that type of organization actually look like? Once you know that, then you can backwards plan it. What was I actually trying to fill in here? Um, organize your home environment. Flow of things then per room and mind my finances. Yeah, I think that it's that idea of like if you get your physical space in order first, you can kind of then allow other things to fall in place. It's like, I don't know if you guys can relate to this, I find it very difficult to work in a messy environment, even though I constantly work in a messy environment. I find that if I put everything away, it's like tidy space, tidy mind. So I think that, um, yeah, getting, getting your physical space in order first is probably a good idea with that. So I guess with your home environment and the organization of that, is that going to involve decluttering? Is that going to just involve like storage or is it going to be like a bit of both or... Um, what what aspects of the organization need more attention so this is my book club page yeah and this is a page that I'm probably gonna set up again for 2024 this is just the 2023 one 
Uh, so on this side here, I've recorded which two books went up against each other in the poll, and whichever one is listed first is the one that won. That's why I haven't filled in October yet, even though we've already done the poll, because I needed to know which one was going to win first. So The Midnight Library was by Matt Haig. You are most welcome. Uh, and then Hunting Adeline, Adeline, Ad Adeline, Adeline, I <laughs> don't know who this, it was Haunting, wasn't it? Not Hunting, it was a different one. Haunting is by H.D. Carlton. H.D. Carlton. So the question was, when is the goal setting live? It is next week, yes. Uh, so whatever time today's stream was, but in a week's time. And we're going to be setting goals together for the last quarter of the year. It's going to be a good time. So the October read theme or like prompt that we were working with was a new to me book. But that idea doesn't need to be a new book. It's just new to me. Um, and then the two possibilities we had. The first one being the one that we're actually reading is How to Take Smart Notes. How to take smart notes. And then the other one was Show Your Work. And I think that that was by Austin or something like that. Let's go check. Let's go check. Let's go check. Wah, wah, wah. Where is my book club? <laughs> I've lost my space. All right. There we go. Uh, yeah, if you were wondering, that we run the book club over on Discord. So it's run all through our Discord channel as related to that. So you can see like this is the place where we vote on the book to say like, hey, which one do you guys want to read? And people just react with the emoji of whichever one they want to read. So it was Show Your Work by Austin Cleon. K-U-S-T-I-N-K-L-E-O-N. And How to Take Smart Notes. And I just didn't put the author because I'm rude. I'll look it up. But yeah, this is our Discord. This is where we comment on stuff and then we have like a little kind of channel to to talk about each of the, the reads that we're doing. And we also have stationary speaks and spoilers and a bunch of other stuff. But anyway, that's an aside. So having a look at this book. This book is by S-O-N-K-E. Aaron's A H R E N S. Excellent. Are you going to have only one 100 day project for quarter four? Uh, probably. Personally, if I'm doing, if I'm going to do a 100 day project, I want it to kind of be like a little, little kind of mini deep dive into whatever it is that I choose to do. Uh, so it might be like. I don't know, there's like so many different things you can do for a 100 day project, right? I'm not sure if I want to make it creativity based or if I want to make it like kind of productivity based or if it's just like me being very intentional about I'm going to take a goal action every day for the rest of the year, something like that. T TBC, I've got a couple days to decide. <laughs> so that's my October stuff done. That's looking pretty cute. Um, after this, we have the year in review stuff, which we are not anywhere close to actually filling out yet. And got a couple of other pages in there too. Doesn't have anything to fill in with these ones. Started throwing a glass. Haven't gotten far enough through it to actually fill other stuff in. But yes, alrighty. So the reading journal is now filled in to the extent that I am filling it in. We can put that one away. Put it away, put it away. So we can mark off that the reading journal has been updated. I'm just... Ugh. Getting my planners back to the point of being updated is a very satisfying feeling. <laughs> like actually being at the place where they, they are up to date is good. So 
reading journal is done work notes is literally just adding something to an index i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it's the only thing i have to do for it but this is my work journal so this is where i take notes for different learnings that i'm doing um it doesn't have an elastic closure so i'm just using this like erin condren band thing that i got uh so put that away so in here it's just very boring looking notes <laughs> like it's just to write down notes and then list out ideas and stuff like that um so it could be books that i read or a podcast that i listen to or a course or whatever else i don't use this pen in it though i use a thinner pen being the pilot juice 0.5 so the only thing i really need to fill in here is the index and that is that i have set out that on page 19 is where this workshop starts and i've got a bunch of pages related to it i just wasn't sure if i wanted to make it hmm yeah i think i do i think i want to have oh but then i might run out of space on my on my index now i'm conflicted so the reason i'm conflicted here is that page 19 is where this workshop that i was doing last week um actually starts in terms of the stuff that we were taking down but it went over five days so this is day one and then this is day two we have day three day four and day five and i was thinking like oh you should really go and write down uh each of the days but because this index only spans these pages i don't think i'm gonna have enough space to actually write out every single page in this notebook not that I have numbered all the pages in the notebook, so I don't know how much space I'm actually going to need, which is super helpful. Um, I've got a pen test page in the back, but I'm not going to reference the pen test page. Hmm. Okay, I feel like I, I was thinking that I needed to write something down here, but I'm actually going to leave it just to make sure that I have as much page on, space on this index as possible. Yeah, I don't usually use an index in my journals. Um, my everyday journal and my yearly collections in particular i certainly don't because the stuff in there is all very chronological it's like yep yeah, february is after january march is after february so on and so forth but in this one and my reading journal and my uh long-term collections journal because they don't have any kind of chronological order in terms of uh you know following dates or anything like that i do in these ones need to have an index so that i can find things easier or i could just you know flip through aimlessly and hope to find what i need to find there we go so for work notes we didn't actually have to do anything so rather than crossing it off to say it was done i'm going to cross it out like this to say that i didn't actually need to do it um, I know the writer talks about the idea of putting a, a line the whole way through a, a entry if it's no longer relevant. I don't like to do that <laughs> because it too easily becomes messy and I think it draws more attention to the thing than it needs to. Like I would rather just have a little, little dash there to say, hey, this didn't get done. But that's also because I don't use the little dash for my notes either. So that's looking cute. Let's see. After this, we had to update the weekly spread. So I need to figure out what I want to do on which days. Because obviously today is live streaming day. It's also laundry day, which is happening. It's already started. I'm going to have to do some filming today and I'm going to have to do some scripting today. But I don't think that I'm going to get my filming and my scripting finished. Or at least all of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a video prepared for tomorrow. That one's going to be a team member exclusive. Team with a capital T. Um, but the Wednesday video and the uh, Thursday, Friday, all of that kind of stuff, those ones need to need to be done at some stage. But I think that we're also going to have to do editing today, which is great. So that then the team video can come out. And I think that tomorrow we're going to do more scripting.
so that on Wednesday, it's very hard to see yellow on yellow, but I can see enough of it in person, we can do filming. Uh, if my October plan with me is coming out here though, I'm also going to have to film on Tuesday. I don't like to do filming and editing every single day, but it just seems that that's the way that this is going to pan out. We're going to do a little bit of editing tomorrow. Wherever I can batch things, it does make it easier, but yeah, it's one of those things. Alrighty, question. What is the difference between your YouTube and Patreon memberships? Not a lot. The only real difference is that the people who are on the YouTube side, they get to have the little icon next to their name, um, like Debbie's got, yeah. Uh, because that's a, a feature that's just on YouTube. Uh, it's, it's one that YouTube does kind of, not necessarily by default, but it's one that they kind of like offer through their platform. I can't get it so that Patreon has that. So that's really the only difference. Uh, yeah, the people on YouTube get the colored name on YouTube. They get the little icon on YouTube. They get the ability to use the, the emojis on YouTube, but all of my team members otherwise get the same perks depending on what level they're, they're on, because we've got five different levels. We have Team Tiny Wins, Team uh, Slow Progress, Slow and Steady, there we go, uh, Team Progress Over Perfection, Team In It to Win It, and Team Moments That Matter. Five teams. But all of them are phew, the team with the capital T. Um, so yeah, different levels, different perks, but those perks are the same across both of the different platforms. Yeah. All right. We've got the weekly spread mainly finished kind of like ideally what I want to do okay so for instance the flick 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 <laughs> this week we have the team live video coming out yep we have the what video is this rapid logging video which needs to have a colored dot so I can actually see it as a separate task the rapid logging video we have the October plan with me, the year at a glance video coming out, the key video and the signifiers and bullets. If possible, I would like to at least do the voice recording for rapid logging is already done. So the year at a glance, the key and the signifiers and bullets on the same day. Yeah. I don't want to have to do like each of those on separate days. Ugh. Um, so wherever possible, when it comes to the filming aspect or like the voice recording aspect of that, I would like those to be on the same day as each other. But these also have to contest, 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 with uh, the October plan with me, which is a much more in-depth video. Uh, it takes a lot longer to prepare, it takes a lot longer to film, and then it usually takes longer to voice over, because uh, there's just more footage, yeah? Um, so that's something to, to try and figure out balance I guess in terms of time spent doing each of them and when I do each of them especially because I know next Sunday I am busy I've got Rachel and Jason's baby shower and we're having it at my place um so I need to be available to do that I'm not gonna have a lot of time on Sunday to do work so that means that I should technically also be thinking about what's coming up on Monday of next week in terms of video, which I think is the migration of custom collections and getting that one organized as well ahead of time. <sighs> <laughs> Done some more of your work and time to fold your laundry. Nice. There we go. Um, let's see. Question, question, question. Love questions. How long was it until you figured you needed a separate R&D journal and long-term collections journal? Good question. So my R&D journal is very much just for making layouts for videos, yeah? Um, sometimes I will trial a layout for myself, not so often though. So that one really only kind of started to pop up when I started YouTube. Um, in terms of when I figured out that I needed a long-term collections journal, it wasn't too far after having set up my possibly like my second journal or something like that and then doing the transfer into the next one being like am I gonna have to transfer my swatch page every damn time <laughs> like if that's not that's not the business let's see I think yeah it must have been my second journal clonk, clonk, clonk. sorry it's my journals have fallen down on the shelf 
So my first journal here, here. This guy lasted from November 2016 to May 2017. I know you can't read that, it's very blurry. And this one, somewhere in here, had my Tombow tracker. Yeah, because I got Tombows quite early into my bullet journaling journey, because Boho Berry had them and I must have had needed them or something. So I swatched these out. Um, I was going to just use it as a reference, but I didn't like the fact that based on the Tombow pen chart whatnot, they put this blue like smack bang in the middle here when it blatantly belongs somewhere over here. Despicable. So and then when it came to my next journal, I think I set it up again somewhere. Let's see, it's probably, <laughs> we'll check my handy dandy index. Uh, where would I have put it? Savings, tracker, blah, 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 KonMari, pen swatches, 62 to 63. See, we said the index was good for nothing. <laughs> That's because these kind of things don't live in my journal anymore. So then I put my pen pen testing page, put these in here, uh, moved the 452 out of the dark blue region because that was ridiculous. So I set this one up again. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, that's okay. And then when I got to my next journal, I was like, I'm not doing this again. I'm pretty sure I didn't do it again, at least. <laughs> Let's go have a look. Maybe I did do it again because why not? I think it was around starting this journal which was the start of 2018, so about a year after having um, used my journal. Because, yeah, you can see I didn't really get very far into using this one because I didn't, didn't feel the need to index stuff as much anymore because I had at this point, I believe, started my yearly collections. Not yearly collections. Cute. This me. This me and my brother. It's telling fake secrets. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, so I think it was about a year. So once I'd done my second bullet journal migration, that's when I was like, yep, okay, I need a long-term collections journal. Also, yay, became a YouTube member. Thank you and welcome to the team with a capital T. Such a pleasure to have you with us. Oh my gosh. And I think that Deb mentioned before something about colored names. Yes, Patreon does the same, colored names and Discord. Yeah. Um, so our Discord... It, regardless of which team you're in, like if you're team YouTube or team Patreon, you should get a coloured name over there. If you don't, you let me know. Alrighty. You're way quicker on the wisdom than me. Yeah, I, I, th I think that it's one of those things that like, I approach my journaling as like kind of a problem solving kind of way for a lot of things that I do. So it's like, hey, I'm having to transfer my collections consistently and I'm not really getting any value out of them just being closer to where I'm working or whatever. Like, is there some kind of way that I can do uh, something different <laughs> to, to make that an easier process for me so I don't have to spend the time resetting it up? And thus, long-term collections journal. Uh, ooh, question. Is there any hint for what your October theme will be? I mean, I could just tell you the theme. That's fine. I don't mind. I don't mind telling you guys the theme. So I haven't planned out any of the aesthetic elements of it yet, but the theme is space, as voted on by... The team with the capital T. Bah. Also, I'm thirsty again, so. Tink. So, we have almost finished updating this weekly log, just to make sure that I kind of know what's going on in my mind hole. I feel like I need a scrap piece of paper to, to map this out, though. So we're just going to grab, grab a little piece of paper. A little piece of paper here. So. Eh. I don't know if I have enough columns for this. <laughs> I might not have enough columns for this. All right, we're gonna cut all of them in half again. What a mess. Whoever thought that drawing this out like this was a good idea is a fool. It is me. Okay, so we have rapid logging as a video. We have the year at a glance. We should probably do this in order of when they release it. It'll just be easier. Flip all the way back. All the way back. <laughs> uh, we have a question about the collections journal. I will answer this question once I've written this out. So we have the team video. Team video. 
We have the rapid logging, we have the yearly collections journal, which really should be here. Yearly collections journal. Year at a glance. And this is the October plan with me. And then we have the key. Then we have the signifiers and bullets. And then we have the migration of custom collections. Okay, so those are the videos. Just so I can kind of see when I'm supposed to be doing what. And this is going to be key ideas. And that's going to be index ideas. What a mess. Okay. So as part of this, we have the scripting phase. We have the filming phase or whatnot. And then we have the like posting. We're just going to, we're just going to do it like that. It's going to be a little easier. All right. Scripting, filming, editing, posting. There we go. So what do we say? This was post, edit, film, and script. Okay, so the rapid logging has already been scripted. It still needs to be filmed and edited kind of a thing. Yeah? Um, we need to do a bunch of the other ones. Let's see, the posting dates is going to be the easiest to do. Okay, so the rapid logging video, oh wait, team video is there, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, this one's on the 20th, this one is on the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, roughly index ideas, 27th, yep, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's when those things are getting posted. Then I need to think about, like, I don't necessarily want to spend every single day um, doing uh, scripting or doing editing. Like, I'd like to be able to batch them as much as kind of possible, and I need to get them out ahead of time. So, scripting for October is probably going to happen tomorrow. So that's happening on the 19th, along with the filming of that will happen tomorrow because it just, it, it's, it's going to take a longer time. Yeah? Um... So that one needs to happen there. I'm going to answer some questions while I figure this out in the back of my mind. One of the questions was about the collections journal. My collections journal, um, or what I call my long-term collections journal, is this guy here. And long-term collections are just for things that are like reference materials, all right? They're, they're stuff that I'm going to want to refer to for a longer period of time, yeah? So long-term collections is like, am I going to need it for longer than six months? Is it a reference material? Um, that kind of thing. For the most part, it's stuff like swatch pages that I don't want to have to set up again and again and again. Uh, it also includes things like reference pages of like, hey, if you have a blank notebook, this is stuff that you can do in it. Um, if something's, you know, not feeling right, these are the ideas for what could be wrong and how to fix those. Uh, if you have a new journal, what kind of things could you set up in your new journal? That kind of stuff. So that is my long-term collections journal. This is very much like a, a reference book, effectively. My yearly collections journal, this guy, is for year-long trackers, okay? So this section here is just for 2023. So this is my word of the year for 2023. This is my 101 things for 2023. This is my 2323s in 2023. It's just stuff that is for this year specifically uh, that I don't want to have to set up with every single new journal because <laughs> writing this guy out three times a year, boff. No, I don't have I don't have the time for that. I don't want to do that. So that is my other collections journal. So long term collections is like reference materials forever. Yearly collections is for trackers for this year. Hopefully that answers your question. Alrighty, let's go see. We had another question. Had another question. Alrighty, Kelly asked, how do you join the channel YouTube membership thing? Um, there there should be a link in the description box. I'm pretty sure. I think that there is one. Let's go. Let's go do a check. Let's go have a see. Uh, Want to join the team? YouTube memberships. Rada rada rada. Copy 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 copy. Okay, so in theory, in theory, this is the link for the YouTube memberships. Um, if it doesn't work, you just let me know. But it, it's all good. If you want to join here on YouTube, join the team on YouTube, then that is the link that you use. We also have the same thing on Patreon, but then you don't get the coloured name on YouTube. So. It is similar otherwise, though. Um, let's see. Did we have another question? So, 
Could you explain or do a video on paper quality versus GSM? I've seen people saying that higher GSM doesn't actually mean the quality of the paper is good, which is confusing me. Fair. There are a lot of different factors that go into paper quality, uh, so it is kind of a bit of a complicated topic. I think that oftentimes the biggest thing people are talking about when it comes to paper and GSM, like, because GSM just is really like the weight of the paper, which often translates to like the thickness of the paper. So this guy here, the 160, the paper's thick enough that most pens, water-based ones at least, do not bleed or ghost, which is excellent. We love that because I don't like bleeding and ghosting. Not about it. Um, but this paper is also not coated. So for instance, if you're thinking about the quality of the paper in terms of using fountain pens, which are quite inky and have a tendency to feather, or like where the ink spreads out from where you initially put it down, you're going to want paper that's coated, probably, because then the ink doesn't sink directly into the paper and then spread out and feather. Um, it's a bit of a complicated topic and it's not necessarily something that I'm like super, super savvy with, but yeah, um, for the most part, if you're just using like, you know, regular everyday pens and water-based markers and whatnot, having paper that's 160 GSM regarding, regardless of coating is usually going to be fine, but it just depends on what you want to do. Yay! Kelly found it! Kelly's part of the team! With a capital T! Brown on floors! Thank you, Kelly! Very excited to have you on board with us, and make sure that if you're over on the Discord as well, you get your coloured name, and if you don't, you let me know and we'll figure it out. So, coming back to the tiny plan, because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to streamline my work process so that then I'm not doing the same thing every single day. I'm like lumping them together as much as possible. So, for scripting, today is the 18th. I think that realistically, I need to film my, my team video today. So this is really kind of the... the I know I put you up here and I, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry, friend, but you need to happen today. So I need to film and edit and post you today. That is the primary objective. Outside of that, I can probably also do scripting for like two videos. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say that today on the 18th, I can probably do you and you. And that's probably the extent of what I can get done today keeping in mind that I also need to do like, you know, the groceries and I need to finish the laundry and like whatever. So that's going to be the 18th done. For the 19th. For the 19th, I need to do, I say, it says scripting. I don't usually script my plan with me's, but I do need to do the preparation work, right? I need to decide on what layouts I want to use. I need to decide on the structure of those layouts. I need to sketch them in, all of that kind of thing. And then I need to film it. And honestly, that's going to be quite a lot, but I know that on the 19th, I also need to finish off the rapid logging video. So I'm going to maybe put that down as the 19th as well, because if I'm already filming, then I might as well film the rapid logging video. It's mainly edited already, so it shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> um, but yeah. Alrighty, separate question. What GSM would be good for using watercolors in your journal? I think that it's less about the GSM for watercolor and actually more about the paper itself like there, again like we said there are other things that go into paper quality like a lot of people will use an LT 1917 Louis Trum 1917 journal for watercolors and still be happy with the results uh, even though it is not 160 GSM but that's because it's like a, a coated paper the ink doesn't sink into the paper as readily it means you can kind of blend things a little bit easier but like I think it's Valeria Valeria has said using watercolor paper is best for watercolor because you are going to get a much better um, finish in terms of being able to like blend your colors and all of that kind of stuff it really depends on how you want to use your watercolors um, if you want to use them for that kind of like you know very nice blended watercolor effect watercolor paper is far superior <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, using that and sticking it in is probably a better idea. I don't paint much in my journals because I don't like... If I'm going to use watercolours, I want to be able to use water, right? And this paper is not really made to handle water all that well. Um, it will kind of ripple or, or bow a, a little bit, and I don't like it when my pages ripple. <laughs> Burning the midnight oil all the way from the UK. Uh, I had a quarter cutter tool. Yes! I, oh, 
trying to source one to cut my washi tape in corners. Um, yeah, I have two. The one that I mainly use is a Creative Memories one, which I got from a hot minute ago. Um, I try to link it in the bottom of my videos every time I use it, but I find that this one works super, super well. I like this one. Um, I also have this guy, which is a cheaper one, um, and it's a three-way corner punch, so it has three different styles. We just, like, kind of sizes on it. It works okay, but I find it a little bit harder to actually get into the corners properly. But you also have a little bit more variety in terms of how to use it. This is favourite. This is alright. <laughs> there we go. So we'll put that to the side. To the side. Yeah, 19th for you. That's looking okay. Uh, and then the editing of the August video, the August video, what the heck, October video, is going to happen on the 20th. And that'll probably take me the whole day. So I'm not going to schedule other stuff for that day, which means that the filming and editing process for the year at a glance is going to have to happen on the 21st for each of those. And I'll put them both here so that then I can do them together. And then, on the 22nd, 22nd, I can script. That one's already scripted, don't need to do that. Script that one. That's a Friday. Vogel's not here this Friday, so that's okay, because I typically try to do filming when he's not around. Uh, Unless it's like one that I'm going to fully voice over. So like this one, the voiceover ring's already done. So it being on the 19th isn't really a problem. This one being on the 19th, it's going to be fully voice over. So it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be a problem. Uh, on the 20th, when I'm editing it, he won't be here. Which is when I'll do my voice over for the October plan with me. So that'll be okay. 21st, he won't be here. He'll be at work. So the year at a glance getting filmed and edited on that day is totally fine. He also won't be here on the 22nd. So I'm going to do 22nd for the filming of those two at the very least. And then the 23rd, I can edit them maybe. 23rd, 23rd. And then I can do the scripting for those ones on the 23rd. Because this one's more about like making page ideas rather than actually like properly scripting a video. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Let's see. You have the creative memories one that was part of your grandmother's scrapbooking tools. Yeah, I know, right? It's a really good... Like, I've had it since I was 13 or something, when I was actually into scrapbooking. Um, but yeah, it works really well. I really, really like it. Alright. So, tink. So, this is kind of my rough working plan for when things are happening. So, the 19th is going to have a little bit of everything. As you can see it here. The 20th is very much just going to be a kind of editing type day. Uh, so that's good. Probably shouldn't have done that over the fact, over the fact, get out, over the uh, water soluble ink. Not so ideal. Um, the 21st is going to be a film and edit type day. And then the 22nd is going to have a little bit of everything. Yeah. That's all right. That, that doesn't look that doesn't look too bad. At least I've kind of got a little plan, a, n a nice little messy plan, but it's still something. Using an A4, that's that's big. <laughs> Let's see. Do you ever use stencils? Uh, the only type of stencil that I typically use are the circular ones, because I. <laughs> Can't draw a circle to save myself. Um, but let's see. Do we have a stencil as a way to count and divide your dots? I typically use... I have a grid spacing calculator that I can use for counting and dividing dots. Um, otherwise, I have set myself up like a little grid spacing ruler. Like this guy here. Um, is that? No. Eh. Poink. There we go. So it kind of shows me the different divisions for different stuff. So it's like, hey, if you want to divide your page into half, then you need to go 17 down, leave a gap, and then do another 17. So I just kind of like put it up against the dot grid and be like, oh, yep, there we go. That's my dot grid. And then I can mark in like there's the halfway point for each of them. Put that in there. So I use this more than I will use stencils for grid spacing dividings. Um, 
I will use stencils mainly for drawing in shapes that I'm not very good at drawing. <laughs> so, we had said, in accordance with the tiny schedule, the 21st is going to be a filming and editing day. So, oh, okay. no, I think you're right. filming, editing. And then the 18th, which is today, has a whole bunch of everything, so that's whatever. The 19th had filming, editing, and scripting, so that's cool. We already writ that. Writ that. Yeah, we writ that. This one, it says filming. I was actually only going to do editing that day, so we'll leave it. I'll fix it if I want to, <laughs> if I can be bothered. Uh, Friday the 22nd has a little bit of everything, so that is scripting. Filming and editing. And then on the 23rd is going to be house cleaning. Thus, the list. And in all of my glorious downtime on that day, I will do some more scripting. Which really just means like video prep, but anywho. Need some dots. Boink, boink. Boink, boink, boink. Boink, boink, boink. And then this will be my day off because I will have other things to do. Like uh, hosting guests and maybe doing some game time or something like that. It'll be good. It'll be good. All right. We have done the weekly spread. We can cross that off our list. Oh yeah, we updated all of the journals and now they're all filled in and then the week can begin. It'll be great. I'm happy. I'm happy about having things updated because yeah, scatterbrained mess. Last week was boff. Last week was busy. <laughs> I feel really bad because you're like, what? I made the live and I'm like, I'm just finished up. But having said that, I do actually want to finish writing down my daily list. So we're still going. We've still got a little bit left to go. Um, so in terms of stuff to do today, because we had already specified what it was I was working on, we need to do the team video. All right. So team video. We need to do the pre-plan. We need to do the filming, the editing, the thumbnail, and after the thumbnail, after the thumbnail, after the thumbnail, upload. Upload and posting. Now, just to make sure that people in the team with a capital T know where to look for things. Obviously, if you're a patron, it comes through on Patreon. That one's pretty obvious. If you are in the YouTube team, yeah, then yours come through on the community tab. I think, think you might get an email about them. I hope you get an email about them. Um, but otherwise... That's where you check, yeah? It's on the, on the community tab. Only visible to, to your eyes kind of a thing. Um, let's see. Is the journal you refer to as gigantua or any kind of standard size? It is a letter size. My, yes, my ginomator journal is a letter size journal. Um, it is quite large. It's quite big. <laughs> yep, an A4 is a double A5 size. So, like, I was going to say, this is an A4. It's not. Get out. A4 size is, like this that's a okay you can't see that i apologize let's see can i nope not like that not like that eh. that's an a4 size and then an a5 size is like this a5 a4 <laughs> um they have letter size every so often i i just don't know when their last letter size journal came out with the Halloween release, they usually only do a subset of sizes, anywho. Is that 
in focus, kind of. There we go, we'll focus on my focus on my hand. There we go. Whee! So the team video was what we were working on today. Uh, we also decided that today, being the 18th, we need to do some scripting. And the scripting... is kind of summarized in this video prep section here, but scripting in particular for today is going to be the year at a glance video, so I know what I need to say about it, and the key video. Solid. And then the following days, I will add to my daily log as we get to those days. I love how, okay, this is the start of the week, right? Like the very start of the week. Whereas if we compare it to last week, the start of my week come the end of Monday was like, eh, can't cover it up. <laughs> but hopefully you can see that it's just this section. It was like, I used like a page at the start of the week last week, you know, which is fine because then I only got to the end of Saturday when I got over here. But then for this week, it's not even the end of Monday and this is how much we have filled in for this spread already. <laughs> I, um... I might need to consider how much space I actually need for the rest of the month before I start scheduling out my October pages. Sketching out my October pages. So we are currently here. We have the rest of this week and pretty much the whole of the week after. So if we do a, a little kind of a guesstimate, I suppose. So this one was when I was still kind of getting a feel for how I wanted to use the square size so I went with two columns for this one which obviously left a lot of blank space so then coming into the next one I did three columns so this takes me from that's the first week this is the second week like that whole thing is the second week so the second week took three sides this week only took two sides and then this week is going to take at least three. So if this is the end of that week, and then we will have this one and this one. That's probably going to be enough space for the entire of September. Which that means that this one here is where we're going to start the goal planning stuff, right? So this is going to be where we actually plan out the goals that I'm going to be working on for the last quarter. In terms of the reflection, because I think that reflection is super important and... I think that if you do reflection intentionally, it can be really, really useful. I don't like reflection that feels pointless. There's not a lot of point in looking back if you're not going to use the information to move forward, in my personal opinion. Um, so the reflection part of the goal setting is going to go here on my quarter three reflection. This is where we're going to map out things like, you know, our wins, our challenges, what did we learn, how are we going to apply those learnings, and then here is where we're actually going to start planning the goals out, all right? If you want to come along and plan some goals with me, we're going to be here same time next week. Whatever time it was for you, approximately two hours and a half ago. <laughs> and we're going to plan those goals out together. It's going to be a great time. For now though, team, I need to go and get started on the rest of my daily to-do list. But if you enjoyed checking in with your plans with me, I enjoyed having you here. Please give this video a big thumbs up. I will see you next time. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Make sure that you do something that brings you joy today. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye for now.